Hey everybody, listen up. We moved the video show to a brand new channel. That's right, we decided after a long time that the podcast videos and the car review videos probably shouldn't be on the same channel. So we took all the podcast videos off that channel and made a new channel called... The Smoking Tire Podcast. That's right. Audio versions of the podcast, wherever you listen, your iTunes, your Google Play Music, wherever it is you get the podcast from an audio standpoint will remain exactly the same. But going forward, video versions of the podcast, both recorded and live streamed, will be exclusively on our new channel, The Smoking Tire Podcast. So like, subscribe, and follow us over there if you want to get the Smoking Tire podcast on video. This episode of the Smoking Tire podcast is brought to you by Honey. Look, we all shop online, and especially over the last three months, we're shopping pretty much exclusively online. And when you go to checkout, we've all seen the promo code field there, and it's staring at us, and you're just going, man, I wish I had a, a promo code to type in there. And when you don't, you're like, oh, I'm really missing out there. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is a free browser extension that finds promo codes for you and then automatically applies them to to your cart. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites, okay? Like I recently used it to save money at Nordstrom. When you check out, okay, the honey button just drops down. You just click apply coupons. You wait a few seconds for all those working coupons for that site and then like prices drop. My wife, she buys pretty much all her clothes at Nordstrom.com. She has this habit of ordering all the things and then trying them on at home and bringing back what she doesn't wear. It's like, it's like you know, try at home kind of thing, right? And on a recent purchase, she saved over $65 on clothes. It was great. She got a new job, so she's really stocking up uh, at Nordstrom. And Honey saved us over $65 in just one purchase. We didn't have to do anything. Honey's found its 17 million members over $2 billion in savings from over 30,000 stores online. If you don't already have Honey, you are straight up missing out on free money. It's a free download and installs in just a few seconds, and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash Tire. That's join honey, J O I N honey.com slash tire. One more time, join honey.com slash tire. And we're also brought to you by autotempest.com. Look, guys, time is money. Whether you make a little money or a lot of money, if you can save time, you're saving money. And when you're going to look for a used car, it's so much of it is a waste of time because you have to do the same thing over and over. Type those same search criteria into a million different search engines for cars. Autotempest.com is here for you. It takes all that work and puts it into one place for you, right? You just go to Autotempest.com, type in your year, make, and model, your zip code, and how far away you want to look, and it searches all those other sites for you. Talking about Cars.com, CarSoup, CarsDirect, Craigslist, eBay Motors, um, um, uh, Facebook Marketplace, you name it. Okay, autotempest.com is going to do that searching for you. It's free. They don't keep your data. Okay, they don't harvest it up. It's a real, real mensch of them to support this podcast for so many years. All you got to do when you're looking for a car, just start at autotempest.com. If you don't save money, you might be doing it wrong. But if you save time, you're going to be saving time. And time equals money at autotempest.com. Use it, folks. All right, on this uh, episode of the podcast, the first episode in our new video channel, The Smoking Tire Podcast, we've got Doug DeMuro on the show. Doug has been a rock star in the automotive YouTuber community. Uh, We love him. His takes are hilarious, uh, and I think I really respect his work ethic and uh, his strategy when it comes to uh, making videos. I think he's a very interesting person, and he's one of my favorite guests on the podcast. Doug DeMuro is in the house on the Smoking Tire Podcast. All right, it's the Smoking Tire Podcast, and I will give Zach a cheers of some delicious bourbon. We've got Doug DeMuro on the line from San Diego, and this is the last show that we are ever going to record in our shitpile studio, because we just built a fucking new one. Yeah! Hey, Doug! 
Hey, is this studio you still above your dentist's office out there? Yes, it is. <laughs> if anyone wants a I great that dentist, was a pretty good studio. To I be know. Honest. You know what? It you know, on the surface, it's fine, but the roof leaks a little bit, <laughs> and I'm, the roof I, does. The roof <laughs> leaking is a problem, and I'm just I don't know. I'm tired of being here, buddy. I think it's, yeah, we've but been you know, you, you get a cleaning and you do a show. And- <laughs> Dude, wait till you see the new spot. The new spot is going to be the best. And I'm so happy to be moving on. I put my Hawaiian shirt on today because it's Hawaiian shirt Friday on the construction site. What? Friday is Hawaiian shirt day at the construction site. They even do that at construction sites? It seems like it would get in the way of like <laughs> movement and working and you right. yeah, it's, it's, you're good. Casual Friday. Yeah, no, no hard hats. No big deal. <laughs> no, they they do the hard hats. All right, casual but, Friday. And it's man. weird with the mask. Casual Friday with a with a COVID mask is weird. <laughs> you look as like hell. you're in the CIA. <laughs> That's what you, you know. Yeah. Um Hi Doug. Thanks for coming hey. on. Nice Thank talking you to you again. Me. You're killing you the game, dude. Can I are you delayed? Is there you good? No, I'm fine. I'm good. I'm okay, good. cool. Killing the game, dude! Absolutely killing the game. Yeah, it's been a. It's been. A, when was I last on? It was the end of eighteen, I think. Yeah, it was the end of eighteen. 18. And in fact, um, not only is the uh, the video version of our last show is our most watched video podcast ever, which is oh, nice. That's right. But I think you know we did like thirty minutes on my horrible mental health, and I got a lot of really nice emails from people who were like, "Hey, I'm fucked in the head too." It was really nice to hear how fucked. <laughs> I head still you are. think about that because every time I get upset or see a comment I don't like or whatever, I use your response to these people to justify my own, yeah. which is either to ignore them or to say something mean or just to not get involved with social that day or whatever it is. But, it's uh, hard. I think I had the comments turned off totally when you were on the show I last time. I think at time. that point you had just turned them off completely. That was a good six months, and I, <laughs> I would like to go back to that. The more recent one is to remove the apps from the phone, which if you haven't right. done yet, you need to get on this train. You know, everybody has a different tolerance for this, and I just ignore. I've gotten better at ignoring the bad ones. Now, some days that's not really possible. But a lot of the times I just don't really care. And some of the apps make it pretty easy to shape the conversation kind of how you want by based on who you reply to. And oh, yeah. I just, Play the algorithm. Yeah. Instagram's the best for that. And I only reply to people who are either positive. You know, if they have a negative comment or if they have a criticism, but they say it in a not asshole way, that's fine, too. And I'll reply to those people. But I'm not going to get involved anymore with the with the troll, annoying, just total jerk people. Yeah, it's. I think you know if certain people are more um, immune to it than others. You know what I mean? Yeah. It starts. It's, it's like you know how 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 secure are you as a person? What is your level of self loathing or self love? <laughs> You know, and well, the more successful you are as a creative, the the worse you probably feel about yourself in general. <laughs> yeah, so that much. probably wouldn't work out too well. Pretty much, you know. But uh, but no, Doug takes it like a he takes it like a champ. You managed to you managed to, um, what I what I admire about you, especially how you use social media, is that I get so annoyed with people. You know, people just want to use social media to connect, right? If they look up to you, if you, you do something like they just want to connect with you any way they can. And half the time, they don't have the fucking first clue what to say. So they just say anything. And right. and if and you are so good at not appearing annoyed by that, <laughs> and he, you know, you, re, you respond to that with positivity, which I can't do. I love you can for I that. Can I tell you something? I genuinely enjoy conversing with people on social media, which I know sounds insane. And it's certainly, I certainly do less than I did at the start, but people still bring some pretty good perspective. And I find it to be kind of interesting to hear what a lot of people have to say. And sometimes it's annoying and sometimes it gets old and whatever, uh, some things, but I genuinely enjoy people send me cars they've spotted on Twitter. And to this day, I will screenshot it and send it to my actual friends via text message and say, Check this out. This dude sent me this, you know? That's, uh, see, people's, that's the one where people send me a completely contextless photo of a car. And it's, and I, my, you, you're like excited by that. And I'm like, yeah. I'm like, uh, but I, I, yes, okay, that, that is uh, a Countach. <laughs> and I have seen one. And, and, okay, you know, and I, and I, and I, I, my brain spins the other way. And I know that's not good, but yours doesn't. And that's why I admire you. Maybe that's what you need to really be successful. I mean, I, mm. I think I think it's insane 
I never, you told me, one of the things you told me last time I was on, we were talking about this was something I've never forgotten, which is that ultimately you're just a guy, you know, you're, and, and I think a lot of the people on social forget that when they talk to creators, like I was just a dude working in an office a few years ago. Like I'm not somebody who you can now curse at because I have a big following. <laughs> I'm just a person too. Like yeah. that's, that's, and so to an extent that, that is a component that I would wish they would keep in mind sometimes a little bit more, like temper your criticism, because ultimately you're talking to like somebody's friend and some, you know, like I'm just a dude, but I don't know, for some reason I, I actually enjoy it. And it's, it's most of the time I find it to be kind of fun. And I enjoy in the downtime, I scroll through Twitter and just what's, what are people say or what kind of weird stuff have they seen today? Maybe I just need to start following her. You're following. Cause when I pull up Twitter, I just hate everything. Cause my, I, <laughs> You know, I, I use Twitter for like politics and stuff mm -hmm. like Instagram doesn't make me mad like that. Instagram, I love photography and, and I follow right. car people and I follow food people and architecture, photography. But Twitter, I've really gravitated towards politics and and commentators of politics. And it just makes me so. Well, you've made Twitter your newspaper, but you don't yeah. have a home and garden section. <laughs> you, you, there's no arts and entertainment food section. That's, yeah, that's Instagram. Right. Instagram is that. Yeah, yeah. Who do you yeah, who do you follow on Instagram, Doug? Who do you like on, on Instagram? Instagram? What do you use um, it for? I follow pretty much. I follow about three different types of accounts. Okay. First two I are follow, fitness models. <laughs> ass models. First two. <laughs> first two are just panty. Yeah, that that's two of the three. Ass, actually, it's, uh, it's uh, weight loss tea brands. <laughs> <laughs> And then photos of hot air balloons, a pair of them flying together, always a pair. I don't follow, I don't follow any of those models. I think that's so trashy. Yeah. I follow, and it's especially trashy when a public person does it. And then yeah. you go on their picture and you, you know, it shows the number of likes or whatever. And it shows so-and-so, the celebrity who follows them and 5,000 other people. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh God, that guy? Yeah. Is, oh, no, no. A couple of years ago, I did an insta ho purge as well. And that yeah. was incredibly liberating because I I had developed all these like weed chicks, you know, like the fucking dab girls and stuff, just trashy garbage. And it's not the photos that really bother me. It's the captions. And you you just can't, you need to get all that out of here. I'm, you know, so all the insta hoes right. left. And that was a good first cleansing. <laughs> uh, I follow I follow car stuff. Mm -hmm. That's about 80 percent of it. I follow house stuff because I love houses. I love and your architecture posts. Those are great. Yeah, that's what I'm primarily interested. In. And then I follow bearded collie posts because I have a little bearded collie puppy, and he's the cutest thing in the world. And so I follow the other similar dogs on Instagram. Nice. And that's kind of the extent of what I do. I try to keep it pretty light. Like you're talking about politics on Twitter. I don't get involved. You know, you start doing that, and then people get mad, and then they get mad at you, and then you get mad at them, and then you start following politicians and news people, and then you get mad at what they tweet and. It just is a. You just described the last four years of my life, Doug. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> that's uh, I. You know how much I pay every week to have an old Jewish man not say that exact sentence to me. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the antibiotic to the, the Twitter like up. virus that you put in yourself. Oh Jesus! I need to drink more is of this. You can't stop. You've yeah. already gone too far. There's no way to unfollow because you know what's out there. And I know. So if you started unfollowing, you would say, well, what, what about that guy I used to follow a couple of years ago? And then you'd be right back in it. I have an, I, ha I feel like I have an addiction to being informed, which is not good. It's not good. It's not good to have the unfiltered opinions of hundreds of thousands of people like, right. like, like commenters, but it's also not good to have all the f information at you all the time. True. But it's, it's also Overload. not good to have none. Right. You know, you but can't balance do is hard, sand, man. Right? It is. It is. Balance is hard, but I think there's something really bad about constant information, especially in today's news cycle, regardless of which political beliefs you have. It's a lot, man. I know, but I Everything feel like I'm just lot. in this state of panic about, you know, our countries like becoming Russia very quickly. And I feel like I just like. No, I feel like knowledge is power, but I definitely am trying too hard. Is all. <laughs> it's just making there's me also, stressed but out. Matt, there's you know? also a literal mental health component to this. Like, <laughs> You're totally it will right. get you depressed. No shit. If you do all this. Yep. And I think that's where you have to start drawing lines to say this isn't healthy. This is literally not healthy for my being. I know.
I know. And but you know what? I'll, all right, here's a, let's do it. Let's do this last six months is ninety nine percent terrible, but one percent good. One good thing is most of the roads are pretty empty, and we can go out and drive our old cars. That's so right. if you're into old cars, here's there's your positive, right? It has been it has been nice. It's been nice to drive old old cars, isn't it, man? Just driving in general has been nice. There's no traffic anywhere. I can go to Orange County and I don't have to take three hours to come back. I know you're like this. You're because in a year ago we were like this road system is fucking horrible, and now you're like, oh, it makes sense with a quarter of the cars on it. Right. Oh. This is what it was like in 1973. <laughs> now we understand why they did it this way. Yeah. You ever see that video on YouTube of just this dude who just set up what was probably a big shoulder mount camera in like his Saab and commuted yeah. from yeah. Santa Monica to downtown yeah. in L.A. And it was like, yeah. I don't know, early 80s maybe. Yeah. And the dude is doing 62 miles an hour the entire way in rush hour. And you go, what? <laughs> what me? Right. Yeah. yeah. Fewer yeah. people. Yeah. Um, how's San Diego treating you? Is it okay? Yeah. You know, it's heaven, really. Don't you think? I mean, it's, it's, it's 70 nice. degrees all the time. And, is and this is it. I'm never leaving. You know, my parents shovel snow. They still live in Denver. They're shoveling snow. I'm done. I'm done. Have you never, been to, ever, ever leaving. Have yeah. you been to Black's Beach, Doug? Yeah, yeah, I've been there. Okay. What's Black Beach? Do I need to, what am I missing? It's a, it's a beach? nude beach, oh. but it's, it's only nude. really, the only people who take off their clothes are like 70 plus year old men. Yes. You know, it's one of those. Yeah, and I, yeah. lear I learned that when I brought a production down there after getting permits to <laughs> film on a beach. <laughs> And no one in the permit office told me that that's what that beach was. And we get down there with this Canadian crew and they look around and they go, you knew about this, right? And I was like, you think I'd do this on purpose? Oh and my we, God, and we stayed so for four hours. <laughs> wow. That's like when the Optima Ultimate Streetcar Invitational sent out recommended hotels in the area by Spring Mountain, and they included the Valley Inn and Sports Bar, mm -hmm. which if you've ever gotten a credit card receipt from them, you know that's the cover name for Sherry's Ranch Brothel. <laughs> <laughs> And they didn't like me telling them that on the email. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Doug, I went through and I made a list of the fucking some weird shit you've driven recently that I wanted to talk oh, about. Oh, all right. Good. But before we get there. Yeah. Have you, you seen get? the photo of the new BMW M4? Yeah. You know. I got to tell you, I have a really, really, really big problem with people who judge new cars the moment they're released because uniformly they're like, this is ugly because it's new and it's in their minds. It's like, you know, it's a fresh thing. And they're like, oh, I'm surprised by this. And they uniformly, this is ugly. I hate how the new, it doesn't matter. Put anything in there. The new whatever is ugly. However, <laughs> This is ugly. <laughs> this is really a new... This one, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, I agree with you. There's a lot of times, like 2015 Mustang GT. Perfect right. example. In those photos when they came out, I was like, ooh, I don't know about this one. And then right. you saw a few of them in person. You go, right. oh, yeah, this makes total sense. Of course they right. did it just and like this. And that's the problem. You're yeah. seeing three pictures from three random angles and colors, and you can't make a good determination. But I have a very difficult time believing <laughs> <laughs> that this will be improved upon by changing the angles and colors. In fact, this is probably one of the most flattering colors because it's a dark color. Yeah, the gray. Yeah, Imagine the this thing in fucking Phoenix gold, bro. Right. With, <laughs> with giant teeth. Have you seen, Autoblog did a post today with license plates. They put US size license oh, plates. Oh no, I bet it's hard. Well, actually, is it better? Does it break it no, up? No, it is no. absolutely not better. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, it's an experience. I mean, Euro style ones are bad because they go across, they, you know, just generally they're pretty. Uh -huh. But the US ones are even worse because they don't even make it across the entire nostril area. Oh, God. And so I it's, bet it's just, they're kind of floating in there. It's very bizarre. I, I don't know if there's any way seeing this in the flesh is going to improve it. It's, pre it it's pretty be. bad. I mean, I, I can't imagine like, this past. Uh, no. they, they went through a meeting and they went, yes, this is it. This is the future face of BMW. Where do you think they came up with this? They're, 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 apparently, they're kind of playing up the heritage angle. Like, oh, like the 507 had those big vertical. You remember? Yes. Had like those big vertical grills. And so they're saying, well, this is kind of a. And the you know the CSL you know it's a CSL shark nose thing, but it yeah. but it does not work here. It just doesn't. And not only that, but people have mocked up like photoshops with smaller grills, and it, that does work pretty well. 
I, yeah. I, I don't understand. Like, why do this? Why do this to yourselves? Like, well, they, you know, when I worked in the need... car business, the dealers always complain, don't make it harder to sell cars. Doug said Here's an example of making it harder to sell cars. Um, yeah, that's, that's going to be, I mean, the... The super hardcore BMW people will just buy it. But you know what? I was wrong. I said I said in two years ago that everybody would just return their leases on Boxsters and buy the 718. And that definitely hasn't happened. No. <laughs> and I was wrong. <laughs> and, no. and so I don't know, man. I feel like people, there might be a run on uh, on current generation M3s. And get them while they're hot, because if this is the next one, yikes. Maybe, maybe, but people, people like more expressive, you know, like I, I'm, I'm still a big fan of like late nineties, early two thousands AMG and M cars where like you had to know, you had to know, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. You that's, had to look for the badges over. and the quad tips and stuff like that. That was, and that was it, you know, yeah. but that's over. Everybody now is getting super expressive and bold with their designs, and cars have you know gold brake calipers, and they have M badges everywhere, and black giant black wheels. And well, you have to stand out, right? Like it's it's a competition. It's like an arms race for attention. Yeah. So if you show up to the club wearing neon, and I see you the next weekend, I'm going to show up to the club wearing neon and with hair dye. And the next, like it's just everything gets heightened, heightened. Bro, the splitter guards on the challengers. That's really where that's that's the perfect example of. Wait, no, guys, it's not supposed to look like that. Well. All right, now it's standard equipment. But that's, that's a pocket square. That that's an that's a live strong bracelet. And this, the I mean the M4. Like I know that car companies are in a tough spot because they need more cooling. Is there another picture? Can you find another like, picture of the M4 in any other color? Is that the only color we've got? I mean, there's that picture there pictures, of it of the bare bumper the is horrible. But they have yeah. to they have to cool more stuff. Like you know the cars are turbocharged, so we have air conditioned seats, air conditioning. Like they need to move more air through, so they can go faster and faster and faster. And like this is almost it's almost like this we we reap what we sow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although Zach, in that picture you have up there, a big portion of this grill appears to be blocked off. Very good. The big point. middle section isn't actually cooling, right? It's just a. That it's the bumper. It's, a bumper. it's the bumper. bumper. Yeah. So they've they've need. made this choice intentionally, not because this they need to get more choice. airflow. Unless they've got yeah. one of those hardcore like air goes through the bumper things, which I have yeah. seen, but I doubt. Well, yes. uh, the Focus RS had the beam, right? And yeah. Did it, have, did it have coolers top and bottom? No, it just yeah. had one one behind it. But, but well, I mean, was I, air I'm coming just, through top? Oh, and bottom. both sides. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. But yeah, above and below the plate. Yes, yes, yes. Definitely. God, yeah. it looks like shit. The M4. This, this the one to have, Doug. The new one is probably the X3M. Is probably the one to get. Oh, I love the X3M. I have wanted an X3M since the first gen. I because I always felt that the first gen X3 and the first gen X5 are some of the most beautiful SUVs ever made, which mm-hmm. is an insane opinion. I understand, but they're they were no I, perfect. I agree I, with you. Actually, they I, were so clean. You know, the and new X3 thinking. is within a, like an inch or two in every dimension of the first gen X5. It's really close. Is that right? Yeah, yep. it's really close. Um, and it's fucking yeah. 500 horsepower. It goes like hell. It's it's yeah. so fast. Go watch the problem our is it's just really expensive. It's hard to get people to spend 90 for an X3. They look at that and say, well, I could get a very nice X5, and yeah, it won't be as fast, but an X3, like those are leased by people to just drive, you know, that I can't get one of that. I can't be associated with that. And that's been the hard sell for that car and the GLC 63. Those cars have not been as popular as the automakers were thinking they would be because it's, it's so much money. And I wonder if that's why Audi hasn't still hasn't come with an RSQ5, which I would love. But I think they're nervous about breaking into like the 80 plus price bracket with a compact SUV. And I think BMW and Mercedes are proven it's harder than we all thought it would be. Yeah, like the sweet spot for a Macan is like 75. That's really yeah. the, the sweet spot for that kind of stuff. The The X3M comp we drove was 83. And if you take yeah. the comp package off it, not much difference, better ride quality, smaller wheels. And now you're down in the 70s. So that's, yeah. that's really actually kind of compelling. Um, it is, it is, but the problem is then you could start comparing against a Macan and you're like, eh, I'd rather have a Porsche than an X3. X3 just has such negative connotations with like a car that is leased by people who don't care about cars. Yeah. yeah. What is the, I, those people don't want to be seen, even though it's the M1, those people want to be seen as driving that car, I think. Yeah, I agree. A Macan is, is certainly, a, a, it says something a little different about you. And having been to the Macan factory in Leipzig, that fucker is impeccably built. I mean, yeah. that was a really... Im- Did you know, Doug? I, you probably do. Macan, Panamera, Cayenne, all built on the same assembly line. And, you know, what else was built there was Carrera GT. It was, in a car. separate room. Yeah. Yeah. The greatest car ever built. It is the greatest car time. ever built. 
You, well, you think so? Ooh, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Greatest car ever built? Oh, <sighs> wait a minute. Hang on. That's a, that's. I mean, it's up there. I'd put it in my top. My top five or six easily. Number one. What do you got as number one? Come on. There's nothing greater. I mean, probably How McLaren F1. Oh, I know it's McLaren a cop out, F1. but probably McLaren F1. Yeah. They built um, 60 of those. I could build 60 <laughs> cars that do 250 miles an hour. Come on. But how many career yeah, GTs do they make? But, but you've been in 1,400 one. 1,400 career GTs. That was a serial production car. It actually was built like a car. And that, and it's so incredible. It's such a special car. Come on. I mean, Nash there's Red V10. It's perfect. They are amazing. Better. They are amazing. But the, you've been in an F1, and considering they only made 60, that is not a shit box. That is a that's a put together quality item. That is true. You know what it's I mean? It's a good car. It's okay. But, it's, a, but I mean it's 20 million dollars. Like that's not <laughs> realistic. You know, that, that's a right, whole okay. other world. That's You that's, said that's, ever. That's what do you want from me? You said ever. You said ev <laughs> ev the word ever throws dollar signs out the window. No, no, no. Buddy. Now I am placing restrictions on my <laughs> on my earlier statement. I, basically, I'm gonna place restrictions on until you agree with me that the Pro GT is uh -huh. no, they're fucking rad. You know what else is on my list? It's right behind you, buddy. That this guy? the blue. My color would be Quicksilver. How is Carl's GT treating you? It's been great. And you know what? I've been, I was intimidated by it for about a year, and uh, in the last couple months, I'm just like, you know what? Screw it. I'm gonna drive it. Now I take it in the rain, and I drive my dog to the groomer in it, and I don't care at all. When you and, say intimidated by it, do you mean uh, because of the value or because of the dynamics? I think the value, the hmm. dynamics haven't put me off just yet. I'm not a Viper. I've, I've been in a lot of cars, but the value is scary. I've never owned a car that's even cost half as much as this one. And so that really scared me. But you know what? It's a Ford and it drive like you can, it's drivable. It's got a little Ford Explorer key fob. Like it's not, it shouldn't be as intimidating as I've made it be. Yeah. And so I've just started using it a ton and I love it. It's great. The it, more it you use it, the better it gets, right? I think so. Yeah. Now, you know, you get up there in miles and, and you start to, cause problems to your resale but i bought it you know carl drove it a ton and so i don't think there's really that much difference between thirty two thousand miles where i bought it and forty thousand or something the big differences start to come between like three thousand and yeah. ten thousand you go to that you lose some money there's like three or four stages and you're already into the driver stage at this point mm -hmm. it's all incremental mm -hmm. I'm of the opinion that miles are cheap no matter what. I mean, unless you're buying a museum piece car where you pay yeah. some premium because it's got the plastic on the seats and you yeah. want to tear the plastic off the seats and start driving it. But like if you buy a car with any kind of miles on it, miles, the miles themselves, I think, are very, very cheap. Yeah, and that's especially true for this car because there are so many museum piece ones. P people yeah. realize in 05 and 06 that this was a special thing. They weren't going to make a lot of them. Like, you need to keep the plastic on it. Like people did with Grand National mm -hmm. and stuff like that. <laughs> and so there are, I would I would guess that half of the Ford GTs have like 2,000 or less miles. And yeah. honestly, I think there are hundreds that still have like the delivery plastic on them, the stickers in the window from the, port, you know, from yeah. the factory. Yeah. And that, and so the result is you don't get as much of a premium for that stuff as you would if you had that in like a Carrera GT. That or, would be like, uh, wow, this one is still in the wrapper. Yeah, or how about a, a Honda Civic GT. SI, dude? You see that today? What how, was that? Uh, <laughs> how about the premium on a Honda Civic SI with 5,000 miles on it? <laughs> Matt, what did you think of that car when it was new? You remember that car? I liked it. I liked it a lot. I had friends who had them. That was my senior year of uh, high school, and I had two or three friends that bought them, and I loved them. I thought they were great you, cars. What do you think about 50 grand? I mean, no. I liked it too. Yeah. No. I don't I, know that I liked it 50 grand. It's I not don't a $50, like it. At, I don't car. like it at 50. I like it at 15. I like it a lot at 15. It's great at 15, not yeah, 50. Yeah, that's right. It's it's a that's that car that you're showing there is a really great 15. Th even with the miles, I get it. Yeah. But come on. What is happening? <laughs> We're there, man. We we are at peak peak high school my our era. What year did I you graduate fear, high school? Oh, three, oh, four. I graduated in 06. I fear that we are not at peak. I fear no. that this is just a blip in the climb to the peak and that someday you know, we'll be looking at this auction being like, wow, we could have gotten one for only 50. <laughs> you know what? You, you're, now, the more I think about that, I think I spoke too soon and you're right. I think you're dead on on that one. Totally. Scary. Absolutely. Though. Yeah. Um, going back to the GTs really quick, a lot of folks bought a pair. A lot yeah. of folks bought one to drive and one to because the because they kind of had trouble moving them in the beginning. So the real good clients were actually able to get two. Yeah, which is, no, they had a ton of trouble moving them. Did and you even, see that? You know, oh, good. Then Sorry. after 0506, the recession came on in the, the beginning of the fall of 07, 
and values dropped like crazy. And Carl told me that he doesn't think any ever traded under a hundred, but it was certainly in that world. Like there, there were they were definitely going for you know one hundred five. That was kind of the thing. That was the happening. one, uh, the one we had at Gotham Dream Cars that was crashed five times. I think they sold yeah. for one hundred and ten. <laughs> <laughs> It was crashed five times. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and so that proves like that's that's insane. Yeah. But still, you know, no injuries, zero injuries, five crashes, zero injuries. And it was re- rebuilt every single time. I mean, crazy. I bet you the car is still on the road. It's yeah. amazing. <laughs> um, it. the, you, we should. I bet uh, Ferretti will have the VIN. We can get it from him. I bet Let's you it would be very, very good. <laughs> um, wait. Oh, did you see the article recently, Doug? I want to say it was in Haggerty about... Um, it was this really strange trend that the more Ford GTs come to auction, the higher the value and sale price of all of them go. It's opposite. Uh, of what you think. It's yeah. opposite of what you think. It's the inverse of it's rarity. Man, yeah. Do you think is Weird. that because then the story gets pumped up again and people is it's like advertising? It could. It's not necessarily causation. It could be correlation, and it's also yeah. it followed sort of the track of the Ford versus Ferrari movie. So we got to wait another uh, year yeah. to see if it holds. I get people all the time coming up to me and saying, "Oh, that's the car from the movie. Oh, that's the new version of the car from the movie. Whatever." That 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 certainly added a little bit of kind of you know allure or prestige to it that it didn't have before definitely yeah 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 so what have you been driving recently tell me about some fucking weirdness bro i, I wrote on my list isuzu via cross yeah <laughs> Man, i'm gonna tell talking. you oh, oh we, can discuss, we can discuss the via cross <laughs> but i'm gonna tell you can i have we discussed that i now own the greatest car ever made the g500 cabriolet <laughs> look at this thing i do like that the cabriolet is the only g wagon that i like it's really because yeah. i think it's the worst one by a pretty wide margin but worst is best. Yeah. Well, in this case, yeah. Yeah. To no, me. It's, it's the best because it's the worst for sure. <laughs> I think it's one of the great stupid cars ever built. But I love it. It's so cool. It's a power top. I just push a button and the is top's it, going down. I didn't know what it was a hell? power top. That's got to be really complicated. I bet you can total that thing out if the cylinders go. <laughs> I worry about that. <laughs> yeah. But there's a shop. There's a couple shops that have have worked on them. So if I have to ship it somewhere, yeah. But oh my god, it's such a cool truck, and you imported that one too, right? So you could get a you federalized know, I bought it one? from a dealership in Newport Beach who not only imported it but they carbed it. So there's only ten of these that have been carb certified, so it's registered in California, um, and two of them have left the state. And the since I last Carfax them all, so I think we're down to maybe eight. So I've got this thing, and I got legit California plates on it. And I just think it's the coolest thing in the world. It's it is the so ugliest. It's ugly. <laughs> the so ugliest ugly. The ugly. proportions are so strange. <laughs> like, Everything about Photoshop. it is wrong. Like an, an Amigo pulls up and it's like, man, what happened to you? Like, My, you know when they chop those Volkswagen yeah, buses? It looks like you did that. It does. <laughs> that my, my insurance guy called it an Azuzu Amigo that went to law school, which I think is a fantastic Pretty good. <laughs> but it's just one of the it's, ugliest cars. I actually got a picture of one the other day next to a Daihatsu Rocky, which was oh, one of my great yeah. moments of the year. That's know? a real shit box, a Daihatsu yeah. Rocky. That's a terrible, terrible car. <laughs> No, the G500 Cabriolet is the Alan Dershowitz of Isuzu Amigos. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. It's the most polished of a, of, an, of a group that just shouldn't be. But you know what? I think it's, look at that thing. Now, Ugh. if you cover the, the front half of it with your hand, it just looks like a regular G-Wagon. Yeah. And then you pull your hand off and you're like, oh. And damn. the top is so funny because it like, it's so rare that Mercedes just flagrantly doesn't give a fuck about something. <laughs> they they usually have the veneer of trying, even if they fail. <laughs> and with this one, they were like, you're not supposed to put the top up ever. <laughs> the, the side window is adorable. That little side I thing. I truly believe it looks better with the top up than down. I think down it looks worse somehow. It, it, is it, it looks exact- like you're wearing, you're going to the gathering of the Juggalos with that hoodie on. <laughs> With that top up. It looks like it, it looks like it's wearing a toupee. Seriously, look at that. It looks like a oh, hairpiece. Oh, it is a no toupee. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's weird it's because a like piece with a triangular window in it for some reason. A very small an afterthought for sure that like the the diameters of the curves don't don't match at all. 
It looks like a yeah. hand cut window. And you know what's yeah. really great about this thing, Doug, is that you've bought stupid cars for entertainment value before, and I respect you for it. Your Hummer was the worst Hummer in the history of Hummers. It was right. so bad, and I and I so got bad. why you did it, and you you martyred yourself on that one. But this one has all the stupid of that. Except right. it's actually very you. <laughs> right. Like, well, you know, it's kind of funny because when, you, when people are into cars and they get money, they usually go buy Ferraris. But the problem is when you did that like seven weed, years ago. <laughs> yeah, I, that's true. And I only bought that because my viewers told me to. Right. But when people who are into weird cars get money, now that rarely happens. Most weird car people, they're content owning like Saab 900s and you know, they waste all their time on eBay looking for parts. But occasionally, someone who's into weird cars gets enough money to go out and pursue other cars. And what we end up getting, it turns out, is not Ferraris. It's more expensive weird cars. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just, I've got the equivalent of like, a, yeah, a Daihatsu yeah. Rocky, except for a guy who's made a little money and can afford. You're like, what the, can the I, I'm on a Ferrari 360 budget, but what can I buy that's horrible and ugly? Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, you know, Myron, I don't want normal cars. I just don't. And I don't want fast cars. I'm not. I mean, I have the GT. That's it. I'm good with exotic cars. Now I want to pursue weird crap. And Um, this G-Wagon is that. I'm so about it. Do you know, you know, Myron, right? Myron Vernus. You must know Myron. I mean, he's the he is literally the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of weird cars. Here's a guy who bought a weird car many years ago that turned out to be a super rare prototype weird car the first convertible 911 porsche ever made it was a 901 convertible prototype sells it for over a million dollars and cannot afford or does not want to i don't want to say cannot afford that might be true doesn't want to pay the taxes on his earnings and he has to flip them into other cars so what does he do he buys (laughs) 50 fucking weird cars right Right. a barn with them and he has every time we do a show and i say some obscure fact some obscure thing he sends me a picture that he owns the car that has that weird thing in the garage right (laughs) fucking crazy person that's the dream that's the world i want to live in i don't care about i drive all these McLarens and stuff and they're fun and it's great they really are and I think if I didn't do that I probably would pursue some of them but I would rather go for some cars that I'm just never going to see again totally and you, you're not going to see a Jeep cab driving around no that's a really and I think that's a really safe it's a because it's it's a safe and it's a really good investment I think so rare the 500 being as reliable with available parts and so much parts sharing, yeah. you know, easily serviceable. It's really about that top, man. That top could fucking hose you on that one. It could, yeah. But I, all you have I to do is make a video. Just make a video. I think. Make but a I video. Think, My it, top's fucked. Hey. I think you could you could go to a shop and they'll remake the top for you, and no one will know that it's not OEM because the OEM top looks kind of bad. Like it's because the, the lines on this literally on the no one's ever seen an OEM soft top. On. Yeah, like everything about the G wagon is super straight and rigid and taut, and you're very precise. And then the top's just kind of like, yeah, we had this made in Florida by the shop that used to make convertible Camaros before they made convertible Camaros. Remember that place? ASC. They would just cut the roof off, and yeah. it was kind of like folded and lumpy. It's kind of yeah. like that. ASC, American Sunroof Company. They did the ASC convertible, uh, ASC McLaren, the Mustang. Yeah. and a lot of cars. The collab like cars. between Ford and McLaren. Uh, the, they did the, you know what car they did that was great, <clears throat> talking about weird cars, was the Toyota Paseo convertible. Oh, Remember shit, that yeah. I bet, one of, the, I bet one of those. Anybody who's watching is like, <laughs> all right, I'm... <laughs> This is it. I dude, can't do this anymore. Dude, we did 20 minutes on the last show in the on the fucking how great the new Camry looks and Freddie Hernandez was like, "Stop!" <laughs> it does look good though. It does. Yeah, it does. The Paseo convertible. I think did um I think ASC also might have done the Riata convertible and also maybe the Alante. Oh, excellent cars both. <laughs> I kind of like a, the Riata. I, by the way, I've got a video coming up of a Riata. Get the of a Riata fuck out of here. Really? The coupe, the coupe was the better one because the first two model years, it had a CRT touchscreen. <laughs> and, and it worked. <laughs> and, and eventually, it was too expensive, and they switched to regular controls, and that's when the convertible came out. But the first couple years, they had this CRT. And, and the one I wow. reviewed, it worked. I'll tell you and what, what a good-looking car. Good car. Unreal. Unreal. In fact, there was a CRT command to eject your tape. So instead of pressing a button like on the tape player, you went into the screen and hit a J. 
We got to do Riata versus Lagonda, the CRT off. <laughs> Yo, seriously, though, this Riata coupe, it looks good. Imagine, it looks good. Imagine, if you will, this as a IMSA from the 80s, like an 80s IMSA GTP type car. Like, remember, like, that Oldsmobile Cutlass yeah. IMSA mm-hmm. car, wide body with the yeah. vertical? Imagine a Riata IMSA car be hot. It's a good car. Yeah. It's got a little <laughs> yeah. bit of, uh, like, early 90s, what, Prelude Coupe to it. It's a yeah. little RX-7. Um, yeah. uh, Paco Ibarra has one. Corey Hosford's buddy. Seriously? Yeah. He's got a, I mean, he has seven cars that are all in various states of disrepairant project, yeah. but he's got a Riata. He wants to make it a that drift car. car. When I worked at Porsche, we had a GM guy, an old GM guy at the company, and he told me that the number one occupation or the number one pastime, whatever, of, a, of an owner of a Riata was spouse of dealership owner. Hilarious. In other words, <laughs> they couldn't sell them. So the, the dealer owner, the Buick GMC dealer, just give it to his wife. That's so funny. <laughs> when I was a kid, because, um, you know, I grew up fucking real, real Jewy, I took tennis lessons, as you do. My tennis yeah. instructor drove a black Riata coupe. And wow. uh, she she rocked it, and I I I, I liked I, I really liked that she rolled up in that. My later t- tennis instructor in my teenage years drove a Lumina Z thirty four Euro. Wow! If, which we really went into the GM hot balls with my tennis wow. instructor. That's insane. You get it. Let me tell you something. You get a tennis instructor with a, a first gen silhouette. That's it. The white. And then you're in the the white one. Oh my god! When you did the video of the silhouette, dude, that that might be fucking Scott's car. I think that's I'm my tennis that instructor's thing. actual car. <laughs> you know, I am desperate to find cars like this to film with, and they don't exist in nice shape anymore. They're what, just gone. What I think the was Riata this? and the Silhouette was like a blessing. It's impossible. Nobody took care of these cars. No. Nobody cared to preserve them. That I feel Z-Net like Euro, especially, like, what? Yes, doesn't exist. I haven't seen one of those in 10 years. I seriously doesn't exist anymore. I think that, Zach, I think this might have been like a 90. Okay. 89, what do you think, Doug? 89, 90? It wasn't it a little later than that. Maybe even ninety two or ninety three. Yeah, ninety two. Yeah, they kept yeah. they stuck with this for a while. So did we just had, had, Doug. We just had Craig uh, Craig Lieberman, the Fast and the Furious car coordinator. Yeah, David, yeah, yeah. You know, and he owned that Maxima from yeah. the Fast and the Furious that does the big front wheel drive burnout. When yeah. was the last time you saw? A Maxima SE with a manual gearbox in operational condition. And and you know what sucks about that? They were at that time, they were the coolest damn thing. That was you know? the shit, and those cars. They were hot. That. They were fucking yeah, hot. When dude. was the last time? That's a good question. I mean you, you, truly years. I think and that's a good idea for a show. I'm be here in California and I don't even see him here. That's a good show name. When was the last time? Isn't that a good name yeah. for a, to, it's a good premise for a show. You start the show. When was the last time you saw and then you present this weird fucking car? That's a good premise. You can have that the one, Doug. Is, My treat. Is, <laughs> thank you. I uh, thank you. I'll, I'll do no, that. No, ask for royalties. He does very well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Two points. The I'll is, take two the points. The answer for all of these is not you know, year. I mean, a, a nice Lumina like that. Uh, there, there are probably a few in Michigan, you know, but doesn't exist. Doesn't Do you know exist. about the Beretta at the Beretta factory? No. Here, if you want to do one, I bet it would be a fun one. You and me, we go to we go to Italy. And we go to the Beretta shotgun factory where they build, you know, the guns. They have been since the 1700s. And when GM started building the Chevy Beretta, the Beretta shotgun company sued them for trademark right. infringement. Right. It was settled out of court. And as a show of good faith, GM sent two Berettas to Italy, <laughs> which what? are now wow. on display with under 50 miles on them in the Beretta <laughs> shotgun museum. That almost seems like a show of bad faith. Right. <laughs> you think you, the, the, Beretta, the Beretta shotgun factory should have the same sign as the Corvette where it's like precision is important because precision never rests. Never, like it's just you know what they should have done is use those cars as target practice. to test the gun. You know what's funny, though, about those cars? They, everyone agrees they were crap then. And even the people who have preserved them, like if you're on, there's all these Facebook pages that I'm obsessed with, like underappreciated survivors and Radwood and... If you're in those groups, the people people who have cars like that are real proud of them, but they all know that they were crap then. But it's starting to become this thing where, let me tell you something. If I saw a nice Lumina Z34 like that, I would turn my head way more than if I saw another 488. A you thousand know? percent, dude. When I went to Monaco for the Grand Prix, I was I spent half an hour obsessing over an 89 Fleetwood that somebody had imported <laughs> to Monaco. And like, like here's like a $2,000 car that someone probably spent 25 right. grand importing and registering in Monaco. Totally. You can't park like, anywhere. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, you couldn't put it anywhere. When I was in Monaco a couple times ago, I saw an, an eight, like a ninety three, ninety four S ten Blazer, so yes. four door S ten Blazer. <laughs> that car, not even the K five, which is cool. The S ten, which is like a disastrous car. That car doesn't exist in America anymore. To, no one has one. Yeah. And I like ran after it with my camera. Like I gotta get this picture. It's got Monaco plates. I'm like, this is insane. <laughs> That's such a I flex, guess when you dude. Have infinite money, you can pursue things like that. My uh, my father's attorney. Well, I mean, I got to tell you, in that guy's, yeah. that's like a press photo, but it looks great in that photo. Yeah. In that color, it looks nice. Um, yeah. My dad's attorney is, is you know, he's a heavy hitting New York attorney, and he 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 uses the word summer like, uh, as a verb, like yourself. Uh, he on the vineyard, you on Nantucket, uh, well, and on the vineyard, he won. <laughs> Cold. <laughs> he had uh, one of those two door Tahoes, like a ninety four, ninety five. I love two door Tahoe, and he bought it yeah. new, and he just spent almost six figures on a full resto to stock. Uh, what a quote, a quote, better uh. than stock resto. LS engine, new gearbox, upgraded diff, fresh coat of paint, restored to stock interior. Wow. And, yeah, and he just because he loves it, and he's like, no, they don't make this anymore. This is yeah. the thing. Like, you know, that's insane, but I got to admit, if I had infinite money, as much as I think that's insane, I would do that. I would I would pursue some cars that don't exist anymore, mm -hmm. and I would make sure that I have one. You know what one car I really like that everybody that has died completely is the original Ford Explorer, which I think was a seminal car in, like, the modern era you of mean, life. Like first gen? Yeah, the 91 to 94 Explorer, I think, was, like... Because that car was really the beginning of the popularization of SUVs in the suburbs. Yeah, yeah. And like there were other SUVs before the XJ Cherokee and the Blazer, but like moms were getting Explorers. Like that was the beginning, and no one thought to preserve one of those. But that car, yeah, look at that mm. thing. That car was so important in the world we live in now, where yeah. everybody has an SUV. Yeah. I and went to Rye Country Day School, which is as white and Jewy as it sounds. <laughs> and in 1992, yeah. the carpool lane was absolutely overrun with these. Right. The, the transition from the Chrysler Town and Country and Dodge Grand Caravan to the Explorer and Grand Cherokee happened yep. overnight. Yep, yep. Just like yeah. the transition to Lexus RX 300s yep. five years yep. later, and then and the ML, the 98 ML, which is yep. another car I would yep. love to have in perfect shape. Yeah, but um, the 55 was, doesn't exist. Never see it. Well, I would prefer. See, I always felt that the 98s with the gray bumpers was like really the the version of that car. Oh, the cl the cladded one. They sold them with gr the, with the bot the cladded bumpers unpainted, cloth seats, and no tint. And no sunroof. They're out there. Yeah, but not in very, America. Very Good luck, dude. You gotta, Yo, you like, gotta import like one. There's like four, but they advertised <laughs> like a twenty nine nine ninety five, and that was the car. You know, but you, you know, you had to pursue it. You and now that's and no, the dealers didn't get them. You know? Yeah, now that's by far like the most valuable one, dude, for sure. Yeah, like now right. that it's one's like eighty five thousand dollars for one of those no, no, that one's worth three grand, and the others are worth twenty five hundred. Yeah. I really um you know my mother was the rx 300 queen of connecticut i remember and that yeah yeah she was up i mean at one point there were five there were five rx well, she had a sled team of them <laughs> she was they, they would pull her on her sled <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and she's down you know they're down to one it's very sad uh they're and all this gone is still, this is still a first gen rx 300 she had a 98 and O. And an 03, those are the first gens. And then yep. she had an 06, an 09, yep. and an 11. The 11 is the only one that's left. They've wow. all found new homes. Um, but the 03, which is the set point, the, the dot two of the first gen, where they went to yep. the Alteza taillights, right, right. that one was the best, in my opinion, the cleanest design that aged the best and was the best built one by far. The quality of the leather and the wood was way, way high on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, and that car, talk about a seminal car. That and the ML, th those cars really changed everything. They that did. That was a total, total change in the way that like life works in our world. Yeah. And now every nice neighborhood, or even not nice, every neighborhood is just SUVs and to an extent those like low level luxury SUVs. and. Mercedes you know, now has eight of them or nine of them or some crap. And, yeah, look at that thing. <laughs> and at the time, like I let's see, ninety eight. I was in high school, and my mom was looking at either a Tahoe or this. And I may, I was making, I was like, Mom, you can't get this thing. It doesn't have low range. It's not real four wheel drive. It's not an SUV. This is blah, 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 blah. and. <laughs> 
<laughs> what an idiot I was. And right. she got it, and lo- it was the perfect car for her. And now when I that. when I dr- last drove this this one, this 03, before it went, I think she finally sold it to my sister's college roommate. Um, <laughs> when I fi- the last time I drove it, I was like. I was totally wrong about this was this year. Yeah. I was totally wrong about this thing. This is an yeah. amazing vehicle. Yeah, and also it kind of, I think it kind of looks pretty good. I always did. Then the, every every RX subsequent to this has looked worse. I it's agree. actually interesting. Every one has looked worse than the one that came before <laughs> it to the point where we're now in the ugliest of them all. It's called but the that, Mercedes SL syndrome. <laughs> oh god, don't even get me started on that. Do you see the new rendering? It looks like they might bring it around. It has hope. Give me a break. The new rendering has hope. Of what? Great. Well, of then the we'll new see Mercedes it at golf, so. at golf clubs and uh, you know, and country clubs driven by ninety-year-olds. Except it'll look good. This did time. you did you drive the super ugly SL ever? Oh, well, I've, I've driven them all, so That's yeah, I would assume that. You're, which one? Are you, oh, you're talking about the. Let me guess. You're talking about the 03 to 12 one, but the facelift version of it, like the 09. No, no, no. That that was a good one. I'm talking about the the 13 to current. The one that looks like it still has the prototype body clad- cladding left on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That car is so ugly, but did you ever drive one? Yeah. It drove great. It was a yeah, lovely car. It did, but they look, the, the generation before, I think, is one of the most beautiful, like, hardtop coupes. Oh, yeah. The, the, and specifically, then the, and the though, changeover was terrible. Ones. Uh, the, the, oh, yes. the early ones. The early ones. Yeah, They're really facelift. nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Before Freddie the bought became, one of those for, like, $8. Before the lights became <laughs> yeah. Tetris pieces that were L's. Well, and they really messed that up because I think that was like 09. They really messed it up because the, they didn't change the rear. So the front had this like new Mercedes <laughs> grill and the rear had the 03 rear. And mm-hmm. it was a disastrous, yeah. you know, matchup of things that didn't make sense. No, the first um, half of that car was really, yeah. really nice. And they're, they're dirty cheap, man. They're free. They're, yeah. they're cheaper than the 129s, actually, which is, which is hilarious. Well, the 129 was a, you know, that was a great car you still have yours no i sold it uh about a year ago for for dead even money which was cool i was i was about that it was good you know people who bought sls should have instead purchased g-wagon convertible (laughs) (laughs) dude i like my sl was cool man i liked my sl a lot that car did everything i expected it to do it didn't disappoint me in any way really it did and it was beautiful that was a was gorgeous beautiful car. car yeah 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 um tell me let wait, wait i'm gonna go back wait you said we were talking about where did we start we went down a rabbit hole well, there was an isuzu via cross that was across what yeah. else did i write oh um how was your james may thing how did that come yeah, about you know, that's a good yeah you know that was a ton of fun i you know james may did this video where he like roasted youtubers cars and i like retweeted it and said you should have made fun of my G-Wagon convertible because it's the ugliest thing in the world. And What his, car did he talk about? Not that. My Ford GT. Oh. Well, you can't and, roast that. That's a fucking GT. What do you even Well, he you said because Clarkson had one, so it's uncool. And also, it's a tribute car. And so, tribute cars are uncool, which I generally agree with. But um, he, so his producer got in touch and was like, hey, you know, James, you can come on and chat with James. And so, I said, yeah, you know, of course. You know, the guy's one of my heroes. I mean, I, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for Top Gear, you know. And so we did, and they, it's kind of funny how it worked out. Me and James ended up talking for an hour and a half. We got on all sorts of different subjects and winding roads and that kind of thing. And they only, they posted like five minutes of it. And I guess they posted a second segment and maybe they'll post more, but it was just kind of funny. Like I assumed they were going to post the whole thing. And instead it had turned out that actually me and James were just kind of chatting and he was great. I've met as you have, I'm sure I've met a lot of these kind of, either rich guys or celebrities and they're almost uniformly not who you hope they are and james was just like he, we discussed legos like it was yeah. just kind of fun <clears throat> no chris and harris is super time. tight with him and always said that that we would get along with him great and that he was totally uh, absolutely on the level and legit yeah 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 that's no great ego, that's, what a, no what a surreal I experience stunned. i was huh? super into it super surreal right yeah oh and that's the other thing i mean i don't want to be a like a fanboy and be like oh james but like you know that that was it for me when i was in high school and and college and then i started doing this and trying to make it i would watch like top gear at lunch as like a reminder that this is possible like you can be successful doing this these guys did why can't you and it seems so far away and now here i am talking it was just the coolest thing for me that's really cool what i tell you last time just a guy man just a guy he's just a guy too you know what i mean yeah i guess so they got expensive cameras and great editors but he's just a guy yeah and it's easy to forget that and i guess i can see how you know viewers of mine forget that when they're talking to me but like i don't know that 
It was just the coolest thing in the world. And I met Leno and that was really cool. But to me, James May was like, that was, I don't know, Top Gear was everything to me. It, it just, it was totally. so important to my development. That's why yeah. we do as this. As like yeah. we used to watch Top Gear <clears throat> and like Thad and I once watched a whole episode and counted the number of shots in the whole episode. And like, yeah. how did, and then we were trying to figure out how we can get those I remember shots the spreadsheet. for $12. Yeah, the spreadsheet. <laughs> you know, like how can we do this with a, with a, <laughs> you know, whatever camera yeah. and a 5D. It's the same thing. JF right? did it with no reservations too. And it was really good. The spreadsheet. Damn. And every 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 episode they do is different. It broke it down. Not it was not very difficult. It was like thirty eight percent Anthony walking around looking at things. Yeah. It was <laughs> <laughs> anything profound in that show was done in voiceover. Yes. Very. Yeah. True. That was what we learned very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. If you it's the the interesting thing, Doug. If you, I mean, I'm sure you're a Bourdain fan as well, right? You know, yeah. Uh, Parts unknown and yeah, yeah. and no reservations. You know, Bourdain was a great writer. And he was only an okay presenter. He had an incredible team around him that would yeah. craft these films. Yeah. Um, but anything truly poignant or co possibly controversial or whatever that he said was always like written on the flight home and then done in, in the voiceover booth later. That was what we learned from Interesting. that. Yeah. Interesting, huh? It was cool. Huh. What do you, Doug, what the fuck? How did you get so fucking successful? <laughs> well, you know, it's interesting. I'm not sure, but don't you worry every day that it's going to end? I mean, I'm just, I, I wake up pretty much every day terrified. Uh, well, I think well, well it's, it's already start. ended for me in case you <laughs> haven't seen my view counts recently. I, you want to know, you want to know why I wanted to kill myself today? Yeah. yeah, I didn't really. I don't, don't fucking call anybody, but here's why, here's why I hated myself today. Since, since, since it's important that I talk about, talk to you about mental health on this show, Zach, scroll up on Doug's channel to his Land Rover, um, Range Rover Velar SV autobiography dynamic edition, uh, which he, which I presume is that the same press car I had, Doug? Yeah, I've got it now actually. It's still sitting in front of my head. Isn't it rad? Yeah. I was it's impressed a, with it. It's a pretty fucking good truck. I really like yeah. it a lot. So. Yeah. I reviewed it and I, I had a I, I copied your title style long ago so I had a, you know yeah. a similar kind of title <laughs> and I hit like f like 55k and I was like well yeah it's kind of an obscure like whatever car and you had it up a day and you're like under just under 600k <laughs> right now and it makes me kind of hate you even yeah. though I love you even though we're friends and you're one of my favorite people and I'm, I'm I couldn't be more proud of your success. I still well, kind of hate you. First off, I appreciate that so much because a lot of people in our business don't like me all that much for that reason. And I never, I don't know, you know, and, and, but they still hate me and, and I get that. No, I love you, day. but I have a jealous hatred of you, <laughs> especially because you have three and a half times the number of subscribers we have. <laughs> and yet you're, you get many more of your subscribers to actually watch your shit. I don't know how this happened. I really don't, but I, I do fear that it, you know, well, and that's, that's always kind of a fear of mine, but like, yeah, the videos, they do pretty well, don't they? I, I, I don't know. I truly, <laughs> what, and honestly, I, now like, I really are, fucking hate you. Okay. You just well, said that sentence and I want to jump yeah. through the zoom call and punch people you in the face. Doug, did you do time. fencing, like, fencing class when you were a kid? All the time. They say, you know, why are your views so much more popular than other people and all that? And I, I truly, I mean, do you know, I truly and honestly do not like going through the quirks, I think is a big part of it. I think yeah. there's a lot of people who drive the car and I think there's fewer people who will actually show you what it's, you know, yeah. what every little button and stuff is like that helps. Um, I, but I'm, I don't know. I just, I, I am engaging with the fans. I think that helps. I, I truly meaningfully enjoy their, their presence in my world. Um, but I think also, that's I probably it. If it was, the, if there was the biggest difference, I have to say, I have to believe that it's you <laughs> like people. That's got to be it. It's got to be that you like people, because yeah. you liking people must make them react in a way that I, I just drive them away. Because <laughs> I don't like people, and that's why I work by myself in the middle of the desert. And it's just the reality of it. And I think you do. But I mean, I remember yeah, when I first came on, one of the first, one of the things I asked you was do you people recognize you on the street? And you were like, yeah, you know, it happens and people are nice, whatever. And it, it didn't really happen for me at that time. Now, of course it does pretty frequently. And I enjoy those interactions, like truly enjoy those interactions so much. Not because it's like, oh, cool, look how cool I am. But each time I always ask them, what are you driving? You know, where are you from? And I have made legitimate best friends that way. One of the people who was one of the groomsmen in my wedding was someone who came up to me. My closest friends here in San Diego are people who have just, you know, 
come up to me on the street. It's like, yeah, okay. And then we, you know, we had dinner and then we have another dinner. And then the next thing you know, you know, we're, we're, we're double dating. And, and I just, I don't know. I, I truly find it enjoyable to, to get perspectives from people. That's interesting. I think, I don't know, maybe, I mean, I, I, I have overall the interactions I have with fans on the street are very good. I, it's not, I'm definitely not annoyed by people who come up and say hi on the street yeah. by any means. Um, I definitely get overwhelmed with, with social media and the, yeah. the unfiltered thoughts of hundreds of thousands of people like that becomes overwhelming, but on a one-on-one -on -one level on the street, like it's totally cool. Um, I definitely like meet, I make friends at car shows sometimes, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's because do you and your wife, like I have trouble bringing car people into my like my like home other life maybe. And I don't know. Like I, I don't know if I could, if I was like, yeah, I met a fan on the street and Hannah, will you come on a dinner date with them? Like she'd be like, are you serious? Like uh, I bet them a little first, you know, I make sure that, you know, I have a meal with them or something before I like. Oh, you pre-screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And my wife does the same when she meets people. I'm like, I don't want to have, I can't be involved with meeting someone random. You know, I got, yeah. I got stuff to do, but, um, <laughs> but no, yeah, I, I got no problem with it. In fact, it is the primary way that I make friends. Um, cause you know, I just moved to a new place and as you know, it's hard when you move to a new place to like meet new people and all that. And that's a lot of the people that I've met have just kind of become, friends. I know it's weird. I probably, it's very unusual. Um, but it's, it's great. I think it's the coolest thing in the world. Cause it's like a built in way to be able to, you know, have some friends in the world. It's so. y yeah, I suppose I, 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 I think your personality matches that approach perfectly. And I think the, your success on the internet has has been the result of that. What I'm there most impressed with is that you're able to get results. Like, like for instance, like, I my the results of my videos are I've been operating under the 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 the, the credo that the metal drives it right like there's this right. many people that know who I am okay and if I drive something that a lot of people want to see a lot of people will want to see it and if I drive something that is fucking off the wall weird not SEO good then less people will watch it and what I've been right. most impressed with with you is you managed to drive a lot of traffic to cars that I think would typically be SEO poison and it's not just a catchy title it's cars yeah. that people are genuinely not searching this for this is an and, Audi oh boy and and what is it about your approach that allows that tra yeah. the traffic that's to be a, driven that's those a kind really of cars good question that's and i think i wonder about that too you know and i kind of try to push the envelope i filmed that oldsmobile silhouette and i was like are people gonna watch this toyota previa and the answer is i love a previa yeah. well, they're the best people actually watch that stuff I think one one big thing also that I've always kind of felt as a reason that it's been relatively popular is that I this is a very sincere one for me is that my videos appeal to both car people and non car people. Mm -hmm. The greatest compliment I get when people come up to me on the street or when they email me is, "Hey, I'm not all that into cars, but I watch all of your videos." And to me, that's like, wow, if I can actually get someone into this, even though they're not into this, that is a proof that you're doing something right. And now a lot of really, really pure car enthusiasts who are really obsessed with especially mechanical stuff don't like me for that reason. I'm too generalist, they say. Um, but the result is that you get a bigger piece of the pie. And I think that's why Top Gear was so successful too. Yep. You didn't have to be into cars at all to enjoy Top Gear. And in fact, it became the most popular television show on the planet. I think the and more you were into cars, the more you would be able to pick apart Top Gear and complain about it. Yeah, that's exactly have, right. There's not, there's exactly not a ton right. of authenticity in that show, but, actually. But, you know, I can get, you want, you want, I put up a video on the Rolls Royce Phantom. People want to see that, cars or not. They want to see those curtains, you know? Yeah. Like, that's... That's something they're interested in, and I well, think that's a that's a big component. Because so many people aspire to own a Rolls Royce, even if they're not into exactly. cars, because it's a status symbol. Absolutely, and they I, think to themselves, "Why is that car a half million? What does that car have that my car doesn't have?" You know, well, that was then, that was some gold you you had when you were like, "This is why this car is worth this much money." I mean, it's, yeah, I mean although, the title's brilliant, but also it's like people go, yeah, why is that worth so much money? And they're going <laughs> to go click that and they go, what the fuck? What kind of door locks does this car have? Because my car is door locked right? too. Yeah, Ex exactly. And that's the thought. It's like, wait a minute. This is this Rolls Royce is five hundred thousand dollars. That was a great idea, although I don't use those titles anymore. That that got played no, out. No, now you're in a fucking now you're showing off your titles. Now, every once in a while, I see when your titles and I go, oh, he's just showing off at how many <laughs> views he can make with this stupid ass title. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do get accused of clickbait, even still. Even no, with clickbait fairly... that doesn't end in a question mark is not clickbait, Doug. That's... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's so true. I do get accused. Of, and so sometimes I'm just like, you know, the, the Porsche Cayenne is a $100,000 luxury SUV. Boom. You can't argue with that. That is not clickbait. <laughs> I, I know is. that's that's when I laugh and I go oh my god this motherfucker is gonna get a million views in this lazy ass title it's just fucking <laughs> let me just read off the fucking price tag in the title Doug no I I have to say though I did learn title right titles also did help my ascent and I did Zach, learn title writing booze, from I working at Docker and and Jalopnik yeah and that was a component of it I, a lot of YouTubers had crappy titles and a lot of them still do and I look at a lot of people's titles and I'm like, if you just change this a little bit, you'd get 10% more views. You know, I feel like actually, I feel like I shot myself in the foot with the titles. I feel like the one take thing, if you know what it is, you know what you're getting. But right. in terms of reaching new people, and actually I think you hit on something that I just learned a lesson. I think you just taught me something, Doug. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, no, you didn't just teach me something. I just think, like usual, you verbalized it in a simple sentence, which is that you found a thing that they want. Yeah. Whereas with my show, I am selfishly doing the thing that I want. You know what I mean? I'm, the yeah. thing that I do, I go out and I, I drive the cars and I talk about it and I am able to do it. I'm able to speak for 16 minutes straight without sounding like an idiot while driving pretty quick. Right. That's like the thing I enjoy doing. And so right. I go and do it. And so and yet you are going, well, what does the biggest group right. of people possible want to see? Right. Well, but Doug, but Doug, do you, do you enjoy the, the content you make? Like, is this what you, this seems like this is what you like about cars is knowing. I think it is. Like, I you're do not, like the little yeah. stuff, but, but there is a, there is some truth to that. And I'll give you an example. I, when I did the C8, I was in Vegas like everybody else and I, I got that car and they gave one to me for six hours and everyone else would have driven it for five hours and 45 minutes and just bombed around. I parked it in a parking lot for five hours and filmed it and didn't touch it and didn't, you not touch it, didn't move it because I was shooting all the little quirks and all the little, here's what this button does. Yeah, and like that. Yeah. And I only got about 40 minutes of driving, um, but I figured everybody else was driving it, you know, and this is what I enjoy doing. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'll drive it later, but I want to get the best content I can, the stuff that people really want to see up as quickly as possible. And so that was, that, that does happen. At the Ford GT launch, I remember other people were out there going around the track and I was sitting in the parking lot showing the glove box release, yeah. you know, but that did That's pretty the well job. too. So. Yeah, you know, I think honestly, if I, like even as as like you know we joke i like yeah i'm jealous of you i'm hating on you but like i love you you know what i mean and i'm proud of you and and i i don't think i would trade the job you have to do for your success for the job that i like to do right for the level of success i have i think that if i was at the 4 gt launch I'd right. be on the fucking track because right. I, because that the because the experience of being invited to the launch and going on the track and getting every lap in that somebody provided me to me would be maybe that's selfish but it would be more valuable than doing what yeah. you were doing even if I, I knew your success was the other end. I don't think it's selfish at all. I think I think that that's probably the correct way to like that's what all of our viewers would do, you know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah probably. Yeah. <laughs> But, I think Pat Oswald said once he's like, just make the com make the art that you want to make and let the audience find you. So you know, some yeah. people could go design their content to chase an audience style. And I think you were the first person I saw doing your style of video of like, here's everything to know about this car. And I've seen other channels kind no, of I saw start to follow form a little bit. I saw Sob Kyle do it before you did it, but not yeah. as well, mm. and not and without without being as good of a a, a character and a and a and a and a, and a personality as you. Yeah, no offense, I mean, no offense to Kyle, by the way. No, and his stuff is a kind of a good example, though. Of he, the problem with Sob Kyle stuff, in my opinion, is that it's too. In, it doesn't only. Sh I, I try to focus only on the stuff that's interesting, whereas he shows everything. Now, yeah. I watch An when I'm buying a car. <laughs> I buy. I will watch a Sob Kyle video because it will show everything you need to know. But if you're not interested in the car, it's not that as in quite as engaging. Um, but it, to be totally clear, though, this is the stuff that I enjoy. Like like the G Cab. Like I was curious, how does the top work? How does the ridiculous rear end open? Like that kind of stuff. I do enjoy driving the cars, but I also I'm always curious about solutions to problems that automakers encounter. And I'm always curious how, you know, there's a cigarette lighter in the new Corvette under the dashboard. What is that? That's so interesting, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, it's that for, that's for radar really, detectors. It, well, and because they didn't have space for an actual, oh. you know, and I just, that kind of stuff is the stuff that has always appealed to me. And I thought if I tried to do that stuff, maybe an audience would be interested in it too. And it turned out that there was a pretty big audience. 
And by the way, Matt, regarding the one take titles, the problem is you were in an unlucky situation because you blazed the trail for all of us. You were earlier than everybody. You didn't know at the time that titling the stuff like that was going to be a problem. And, but we all, we all got to play off of the people who came before us. And that's kind of a benefit that the rest of us have a little bit enjoyed kind of on your back and on the back of maybe stop Kyle and some other people who were like really early who like were the biggest people initially. And then you said, okay, well, how can we change this or whatever? Um, and by then it's, it's hard to change your situation because you've done a thousand of these videos yeah. and it's like, this is what they're titled. I literally have done a thousand actually. Yeah. <laughs> the ones that have done the best, actually, if I, if I'm to toot my own horn at all and I beat myself up a lot for, for every little thing I don't do, but if I did something well, it was, I decided to make a lot of videos with cars that came out before YouTube. And so yeah. when a new car comes out now, a dozen people make a video yep. of it and it gets yours gets lost. But if you look up a 94 fucking Civic review, yep. you're getting mine. You know what yep. I mean? And 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 that I go back to videos that didn't do so well in the first week or two weeks and I'll look back a couple of years later and go, "Whoa, you yeah. know, where that 700k come from?" And so exactly. the the tail is long and that's the that's when you say I mean, for you, it's it, I can't. The fact that you think that it could end at any time is very <laughs> funny because you have you have the same long tail I have, except even more. And yeah, and but- and YouTube, unless I mean, literally, unless the government breaks up Google, right, and or something like that happens, and YouTube as a platform completely collapses, dude, YouTube is your pension, man. If you uh, yeah, retired, Matt, Matt- you'd have a long tail. Ultimately. We're making car videos on the internet. There's no way this sustains. <laughs> There's no, no way. Well, look, dude. So, like, I save every penny, and the cars I buy are very, like, don't lose any value. I can't convince myself to spend more than 40 grand on, like, a daily driver car. I just am terrified because, yeah, I get your point, but, like, and one of the interesting things, one one thing that actually does kind of annoy me with viewers is that people say to me, oh, you're making so much money, oh, you're rich, whatever. And it's like, I've done pretty well the last couple of years, no doubt. But this, I'm not a lawyer. This isn't a 40 year career. Yeah. You will not remember me in 10 years or YouTube or whatever. And I will have to be smart and transition to whatever platform comes next and make sure to stay on top of it with my content. And if I don't, I'll fall behind. And that has happened to many people. And that's the thing. This isn't like I went to law school and like I'm now, you know, if one firm doesn't hire me, another one will. It's it's you got to kind of get while the getting's good. And yeah. that's scary, you know? Yeah. I mean, look, I am super privileged. I mean, not only am I white and male and 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 I I come from money, so I have uh, a, a, a a supportive family and all this other all this other stuff that that a lot of people don't have, and so I, I am more privileged than fucking anybody and and I and I'm able to use that to do a pretty a fairly modest career honestly Tr- fucking drive some cars build build one little building i mean it's not i'm not looking at world domination here um and and um and not i think with that attitude for, you know for you for other people that have been able to with with less uh, uh um to really really build something the one thing i have to i'll give you my my little bit of experience advice Uh is it's like a casino you only win when you take your money and leave if you if you remain a slave to youtube yeah that's that is really the problem because no matter you can't you just can't be dependent on that and so that is the issue and that's that's my biggest fear because i i don't know about you but i'm obsessive on tracking the numbers on on youtube more than i would guess most youtubers i never was and and that might be another reason you're so successful because you because you really study those numbers and i don't that might be why too i have embarrassing spreadsheets but i hit you know there will be and and inexplainable lulls there will be a period where a month will just have a month of bad views and there's no reason for it that cars are as good as they were last month it just is down that month and then it comes back and then it goes down again and then it comes back and it's weird. There's like a wave pattern to it. But regardless, um, in those times, I'm always thinking, is this the end? And you're right. You can't rely entirely on an algorithm that you don't know much about. YouTube is a fantastic platform and I am eternally grateful for it. But 
it's a little tricky to be able to to base your entire life and your decisions yeah. and your house purchases and kids schooling and and everything on is this going to continue in a year or five years or 10 years yeah you know? totally and like look the best thing about youtube is there is a zero barrier to entry what's your email address here's yeah. an account right now you are a broadcaster yeah. you know what i mean period people people like young people like my little nephew who's like 10 he thinks i'm a god because i have a youtube channel i'm like cool you can have a YouTube channel. Like, let's make right. one for you right, right. now. Like, right. no barrier to entry, right? But at the same time, your employer, the filter by which all money comes through, has a vested interest in never giving you a raise. Right. And so you you literally cannot win, ever. You can succeed, you but you can't ever fully beat the system in any kind of permanent way. Right, It's right. very Although tough. I agree with that, although I will say even beyond that, there is now barriers to entry have become a little bit more significant in the YouTube world. And I, I'm really lucky, as are you, as are all of us who are doing this, that we got started when we did. I had a learning curve probably two years where my videos didn't get much traction. And if I did that now, I just would be done. But well, I that's had, the, that's the time period. Time. Us too, man. Back in 09, we yeah. had 09 to 11 was a real struggle for us as well. And I remember your early video efforts were a struggle too. And your writing yeah. really outshone your videos during totally. that time. Yeah. And if you if you were doing that now, you would just be forgotten in six months. You wouldn't yeah. have. We had a long, uh, you know, takeoff pattern. You know, like like a long runway basically to figure this out. And people now, there's every space is so uh, saturated that I think it's a little bit more more challenging. Yeah, when but people yes, ask me how to get exactly right. when people ask me how to get started, I have no idea. I don't know what you do now. I genuinely, uh, I, you know, I openly tell people I got lucky. It's like TikTok, you got started TikTok it's, now. It's been a lot of work, no question, and I don't want to discredit that and be like, oh, I just got lucky, haha. But there was a, timing, especially. There was a luck to getting started in a, in thirteen <clears> rather than now. Your I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a better career move in the history of automotive media <laughs> than you buying that stupid shit pile Range Rover. And <laughs> I mean, re I mean, honestly, dude, you dive bombed so hard yeah. with that story. I mean, that if if oh, somebody, yeah. it, a lot of people send me writing to read if I want to get into cars, and yeah. here's my writing. 75% of the writing I get is someone's defense of their own car, right? Yeah. They either review their own car or defend their own car purchase. The other 25% is as some sort of defense of slow car fast. These are the right. only two types of submissions <laughs> I receive. There's nothing else. But you come out of nowhere going, I am going to fucking smoke this corporation and write about it for this super progressive media outlet for the benefit of everybody else who should buy an equally terrible vehicle and also smoke this corporation that is so golden doug you're yeah. a genius you know I, I haven't thought about that much although i will tell you the air suspension compressor broke on that car today <laughs> and it's gonna be six hundred dollars oh we God. still own it um, is it? I'm sorry. Is that car summering right now? <laughs> that car spends its entire life on Nantucket, and my buddy Mason he uses it when I'm not there. And Dude, next time I go to Nantucket, can I use it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I would and, love that. That'd be so. But I great. will say, I will say, we're getting to a point with that car. I think I'm just going to turn it over to him. I really want a Land Cruiser, a 200 series, and uh -huh. um, the the Range Rover. It's getting old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, those I'm cars, those are, those are not like defenders. They're disposable. You know, at a They're certain disposable. point, they are disposable. But you I know, mean, just that though. series of stories, though, was so, uh, yeah. you know, Let me tell you, you relatable. Know, bring that up. A lot, of, a lot of my current viewers don't know about that. And, and um, because, you know, that was the thing that kind of started the snowball. And now they know where it's gone, but they don't really know that that all started. In fact, occasionally I get people who come to me and say, hey, I, I heard Carmex offers these warranties. What do you think? And I'm like, oh. Oh, my God. Know. That's but, how you know. That's how famous you are. You're so <laughs> famous that people no longer know where you came from, Doug. You're well, only got, famous. You're not even normal anymore. Congratulations, buddy. <laughs> it's so funny that you bring this up because I – a couple stories about that. I, I was sitting – I still remember – I lived in Atlanta at the time, and I was sitting 
bed late at night, like tr trying to go to bed, but I was, you know, look at cars online like everybody does. And I really wanted to range over from that era. And I somehow ran across the fact that CarMax puts warranties on their stuff. And I said, wait a second, this, they do, this is insane. And it just kind of went from there. And I bought the car and then I thought maybe the viewers would, or the readers at the time would be interested in this. And <laughs> I never, I truly, I bought the car before I started writing. I was still working at Porsche at the time. A lot of people accuse me of buying it just for clicks. That, I was not planning at any capacity of doing this as a career when I bought the car. In fact, the first warranty repair wasn't even, I didn't even write about it because I wasn't writing at the time. You can't, and you then, can't be a nobody and do something just for clicks. That's not right, how that right, works. Of course, it's not realistic, that's not right? How You're that works. Get the click. And then I thought, you know, I like, maybe I had a lull in content or something one week and I was like, maybe people would be interested in hearing about this. And yeah, that was really where the snowball began. Um, I, well, I mean, that's also the that also is inspiring because and I use it as an example for so many people, because a lot of people write to me and say, how do I do what you do? And my response is obviously learn Adobe Premiere Pro. That's where yeah. I start. And that deflates ninety nine point seven percent of people. <laughs> and, and then the three who are remaining go, no, no, no. How do I? get cars and i go well th you can't get cars until you figure out how to make a lot of videos without getting cars right. so right. you need to figure out what you're going to do to 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 do a thing and you created a career from thin air uh based on no access whatsoever yeah which is important it's, a, it's such an important lesson for everybody because in the beginning we had no access either my only right. access was charming my friends cars there right. we had no press and that's cars. what i tell people by the way when people ask me that i tell them exactly that i say honestly like press cars are hard to get you need to what is your mom driving what is your brother driving what is your best friend driving how can you make a video or an article on that that is different than what other people are doing that's your end mm -hmm. that's the only way you can get it you yeah know? Um, and that's what I did. And, and, but like I said, I got lucky and things weren't quite as saturated at the time, but that's the way in. Yeah. What do you think about the short form stuff? Do you fuck with the, with like TikTok or any of that kind of stuff? Do you mess with any of the short form stuff? Are you not no, really about it? No, but you know, I got a second channel now and I do kind of shorter videos on there that are like nine minutes, but no, nothing that's like 30 seconds or mm. anything like that. With and let me just, you know, the audience is not going to find this interesting. And by the way, stop asking questions. We have way more than we'll ever get to. And we're going to get to a few. Uh, Doug, you got time? You doing anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, right. I get all the time. I enjoy the questions. <clears throat> I enjoy the questions. So as long as you got it. Well, Zach's our filter. So we'll go. Th we're going to okay. go through. Zach f is going to filter them by this most interesting. Um, and we really appreciate everybody. Oh, and now I just blanked on what I wanted to fucking ask him before we got Probably to Probably because he mentioned second channel. Second channel. That's what I was talking about. Well, first, it's an opportunity to promote after this show is over. As I said in the beginning, this is the last show in our old studio. Tomorrow over the weekend, Zach and I are disassembling the studio, boxing it up. We're beginning to move it across the street. And we have enough episodes for two weeks. Now, this is why we record live and then it comes down and then it goes up in the schedule. Where's the Ed Bullion Where's show? Where's the Ed Bullion show? Where's the Tom Segura show? Where's the show? Where's the Doug DeMuro show? <laughs> I'm watching the Doug DeMuro show right now, but where is it? <laughs> I literally had a, an hour-long conversation with a professional podcast management team that sponsors Rogue. They do Rogan. They do Segura. And I go, please help me. Everybody cannot. No one can figure out our fucking process. What is the deal with that? I, you know, I get, you know, I started getting people angry because I was putting up videos during COVID because yeah. they were saying, they were saying you are filming during this. There's a lockdown in California. You're a complete asshole. You're filming anything for a buck, right? Yeah. And But some of the video, I got videos currently that I filmed in January that still haven't gone up. <laughs> I wow. Know. I people think I'm a, people think I, I'm like a vlogger and I try Life's to explain, no, life. like, no, that's not how it works. Look, I had to make a video about it. I have been filming during coronavirus. I'm not going to fucking, I work alone <laughs> in the right. middle of the desert. You're saying I right. can't do that? How is that right. less dangerous or more dangerous? Right, right, right. You know what I mean? I, I think there's the letter of the law and the spirit of the law. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yeah, I agree with you to, to a large extent. And I shot some stuff with my own cars and I even had some press cars come and dis I disinfected them myself, even though the press car <laughs> companies claim they did. And like went to a park. Did you get the hang cars, tag? The, it's been this has been disinfected yeah. by by. I don't trust them though. I don't trust them. 
the the but like I but for honestly though, Doug, for every one person who bitches that you made content, aren't there thirty that say thank you for keeping me entertained while I'm stuck at home? Because that's yeah, that's and, the and, ratio for us. And I'll be honest with you, that was pretty profound. When 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 COVID started, I talking about depression. I had some days where it rained that whole week here in mm-hmm, San Diego mm-hmm. and probably where you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was happening. And I kind of saw it coming a little bit before everybody else. Cause I read some like long forms about it and I was like, this is going to hit everybody. And when it started to hit, I, I remember it would take me like a full day to edit a video, like eight to six. Cause I just couldn't focus and getting those emails from people saying, Hey, you're keeping me going through this was like, uh, even from medical doctors who emailed me and said, I'm treating this and your videos are like a nice break. It was like, okay, I need, like, I need to focus. I need to keep doing this. That like really helped. It yeah. really, really, really helped. It helped. It helped us too in continuing the podcast flow. And and I went into I went into a panic attack probably four different times March and April as mm-hmm. I almost ran out of both cars and advertisers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And managed to salvage it at like the very last minute, and, yeah. and it, it was really stressful. But like, it's okay. Um, and we just spent so much money on the studio, like in December, like all that money is spent, and the credit card yeah. bills all need to be right. paid. But right. uh, but you know, yeah. But the point was, I'm sorry, I want to get back to the original thing. It's 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 fine. I, I have no people have real problems, and we're right. we're okay. Um, but but. The point was second channel because we are about to split the podcast off of our main channel and onto the second channel. Why did you start a second channel? Well, you know, it became clear to me about two years ago that people were that I was getting all these views, as you've seen on my main channel. But I, I had kind of married to a format. Um, and, but I didn't necessarily want to only do that. And also because I think that one day maybe people won't watch that format three, four years, maybe they'll get tired of it. And so I was like, I should create an ability for, and I also get a lot of emails from people saying, Doug, I like the videos you used to do where you did like weirder stuff. Like I, I don't even remember, like I carried a TV on the roof of my Ferrari. There are a bunch of these. And I said, you know, I might as well create a second channel to be kind of an outlet for some of these weirder things. And it's actually been the greatest thing I ever did because it gives me a chance to one-on-one kind of talk to people and I don't have to care about the views. It gives me a chance to review like a, a facelift of a car and I don't have to like go through the whole thing again. Like I just did the Supra, the, the, the next model year Supra. Yeah, I get that Put next that on week. My second channel. I can't do a full video on that again, but it worked great on the second channel. And I can sit in my garage and like talk about an issue that's important to me and people will watch or they won't, but it won't affect the views on my main channel. Cause you start putting that in between the content on your main channel. And I personally don't think that the algorithm is smart enough to figure out, okay, here's one of those big videos that everybody watches. Then the next day, okay, this one only sent to a smaller group of people. Yeah. I think this has been a, a big problem for us. I think my approach, which was sort of guessing was you've got all these people feed them everything. Right. So, but why, why, but when you originally said, I'm going to start this new channel, why did you not say, well, I've got whatever it was at the time, half a million or 800,000 or wherever it was when you started that, maybe it was more, whatever it was. Why didn't you say, well, I've got all these subscribers. Why don't I feed these subscribers more content? Because it's not like you were putting out like daily content on the main channel. Because I looked at the Smoking Tire YouTube channel and realized that the uh, that the podcast videos don't do as well as the reviews, and I realized I'm serious. It wasn't just you, but a couple other people. I realized like maybe I should consider if I want to do other stuff, I shouldn't take the take take away from the stuff that does really well. You know, Doug, I love you, <laughs> but if you use me as a data point to determine that you should do something different than I'm doing maybe like text me like <laughs> like like is, this, is it really too much to ask for you well, yeah. to do a scientific study on at your home involving my show in which you determine that I am doing the wrong thing and you don't go hey Matt guess what I discovered we, come on man we've been given the placebo pill <laughs> Part of the problem is I just don't, the algorithm, for me, it was an experiment too, though, keep in mind, because no, I don't think any other car YouTubers had started a second channel at that point. 
And so I wasn't really sure if this approach was going to be any better than your approach. I just figured I'd give it a shot. Um, yeah, you well, know, you well, you fucking won that one. Uh, you it, definitely it worked out. It worked out, but it's also for me. It then became like, oh crap, I have to film videos now for this thing. Right. <laughs> you know? yeah. I was used to filming two a week, and it's like, oh crap, I got to feed this piece. Yeah. Um, but I just, I yeah, I didn't know any more than you did. That's that, and that goes back to our problem that we were discussing before with the algorithm. You're kind of, it's kind of your master. You don't really know what is the right move and and also it changes i mean i can point back to, on my spreadsheet to a couple of periods where i guarantee if i talk to someone who was responsible for algorithm stuff that day where there was a change yeah because i can look at certain stuff and see a certain pattern and then you yeah. know and then there was that pattern didn't emerge after that yeah um yeah. and who the hell knows that's the problem with it yeah well we're so so all right so we finally it took us i guess uh, two years to figure this out because we're fucking stupid and we have our heads in the sand but uh but we are splitting while we're moving studios during this time we are eliminating a hundred percent of the podcast videos from the main channel and zach has spent the last several months re-uploading them to a new channel which is called the smoking tire podcast that is the name of the new channel can people wow. subscribe yet is it no, live yet it is not okay i will you're going to hear a lot of me on social media trying to, because here's the thing. When you make a new channel, you can't go live until you hit a certain number of subscribers. So right. I need everybody to subscribe to it before, because we got to do live shows on it. So, so, so we need to get subscribers to it quickly. So I'm hoping that it fixes or improves our algorithm problems because the real problem that I'm having Doug right now is I start to go through these numbers for this new channel is that just is a is a there's not enough percentage of our subscribers getting and watching our our stuff um, yeah and I can't um, I can't find a real scientific reason why other than the differential between podcast views and yeah. car review views. That would, be the, that would be the only thing I would guess is yeah. that there was, and because that's the problem. Here, here's what I would guess happened. You were doing car reviews, whatever. You would do a podcast. It would send the podcast video out as a notification. People would see it and say, I don't want to see the podcast. I only want to see the car reviews. And then that tells YouTube, okay, this guy whatever percentage of people are just ignoring that notification. And then the same thing happens the next week and the yeah. next week. And then suddenly your view traffic starts to go down. That's yeah. my guess though. It's worth noting. I'm not, I don't know, you know, that's well, but you don't know, but you spend time studying. So, which is, well, which I've is looked at yours, but I, I don't know that for me. I don't know any of this stuff. That's the thing. No one really knows. We just do our best to kind of hope that it goes in that direction, you know, yeah. but that, that would be what I would guess is going on. Well, either way, I mean, look, that's what we're doing. And so th these are the things. So anyway, next time we do a show, it's going to be on a new channel and it's going to be in a new studio. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is going to be the thing. With new cameras. With new cameras. Oh, new dude, Doug, wait till you see this fucking shit, dude. <laughs> this is the coolest. Me and Zach went up to uh, went up to the late night play set podcast so these guys these are some porsche people that i know they bought david letterman's desk and 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 oh, set up from the set no this is this look at this picture he's going to pull up this is jay and nicole ryan they're a lovely couple they live in the valley and they do this their husband and wife and they do this little talk show from their uh, apartment and just pull over the whole screen zach whatever and those fucking full size pictures are not working. But look, this is their this is in their living room. It looks oh. like a talk show set. And there this dude go. Jay, he's a he's like a Hollywood set designer. So we've got the lighting and all yeah. this stuff, right? So we're not getting Letterman's desk in the new studio, but they their recording setup is they shoot it on iPhones and the switching thing is an iPad Pro. They literally yeah. shoot on six iPhones. That's yeah. their podcast setup. I shoot almost everything on iPhone. I, the camera's just so good. Yeah, but this whole this rig that they have is a live switching broadcasting tool. Like we're literally running this off a of Mac Pro right now, and we are upgrading to an iPad. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so, so wait, crazy. So are you going to shoot on iPhones, or do you now? We're going to shoot na right now. We we use Logitech webcams and yeah. and they're terrible, but they're reliable. Yeah, and yeah. we're upgrading to iPhone 11s, which yeah. each iPhone has three lenses, and so the yeah. iPad you can live switch between 
the lenses. So each camera you do has a tight and a wide on it. How crazy is that? Right. So right. awesome. So well, like, what's the point of at this point, unless you're doing something really insane, like real TV or movies, what's the point of not using iPhone, you know? Well, yeah, I didn't, we didn't know what the limiting technology was, but apparently there just isn't any anymore. So now, well, a year, a year ago, uh, you know, he said that it was like a little glitchy and now it's butter smooth, yeah, which yeah. is amazing. So yeah. we, we waited yeah. the right amount of time, but so, I just couldn't believe what I was seeing. So we're there. just yeah, going to yeah. be eliminating so many wires in the new studio. There's going to be yeah. iPhones like stealthily mounted on the wall. It's going to be awesome. Interesting. Yeah. What a world we live in, huh? Dude, it's crazy, man. This is so great. Legal weed and this. Oh, I mean, it's <laughs> in some levels so civilized. You know what I mean? Another level. Uh -huh. Zach, uh, the people have a lot to say. Let's see if we can get through a few of these um, before Doug gets bored of us and goes back to his Ooh. famous life. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Dude, I'm, I, wa I really was hoping that this summer was going to be the summer we met up in Nantucket, but I don't think it's going to happen. But you can meet up in San Diego. I have a trip booked, but you really? um, that's the big conversation right now in my house. Are we actually going to go? I'm pushing hard, but... When is your trip? Uh, Mid-August. Oh, it might be okay by then. I would, yeah, I'd keep your reservation. Let me tell you something. Massachusetts still has short-term rentals banned right now. So, oh, like... Wow. A lot's going to have to happen between now and then. Yeah. So we're doing this adventure drives thing. You know, Rob Ferretti's uh, yeah, no, yeah. no stickers rally. It's brilliant. And so this is supposed to be an event third week in July that starts in Seattle, goes into Canada and then comes oh. back down into Jackson Hole. And so they are determined to not cancel the event. So there, it's still on, but there's a there's a Canada, a Canada route and a no Canada route in case we can't get <laughs> well, the border. Well, that makes sense. This yeah. is what we got to do. Yeah. And my wife and I are driving a, a Lamborghini Urus, which which is, is a car that morally I'm conflicted about. But as something you're going to put 3,500 miles in two weeks on, I mean, is there a better option? I think right. not. That's, right. that's a fantastic choice. Interesting, man. <laughs> I hope it works. What a, what a summer it's going to be. It's I feel be so bad. God, talk about Nantucket. I feel so bad for all the businesses. You know, it's funny because all the people up there who are year-rounders, just complain bitterly about the tourists. It's gonna be a little different this year. Let's see how you feel on the Jersey Shore. Let's see how you feel in the Hamptons. Yeah, with no tourists. When your restaurants aren't making any money, and you're, you know that it's tough. I really feel bad for these people. There's a great community up there, and I, it'll it'll be interesting to see what happens. It's always pros and cons, right? Because like there's tourists that show up and fuck your town up, or they right, or they're assholes, or they just uh, you know like any tourist destination in Hawaii, Tahiti, like places like that, or Nantucket, and then but that is like a huge part of the economy. Yeah. But right. you can also you can want the tourism without a lot of the problems tourism can yeah, bring. Yeah, sure, of course, and that would be nice for all of us. I mean, when I go yeah. up there, I don't encounter people you know i go up there and i rent a house with like my closest friends and we all just kind of go to the beach and drive my truck and all that but i don't know it'll be sad it'll it's a, for, for everybody who's in a, any place that relies on travel or patrons or anything like that it's just a really tough time so do they we'll have see. coronavirus cases on nantucket a few yeah but but very few and it's been i think two weeks since the last one was diagnosed mm. they've had only one death but you know, the problem is getting there. And I didn't realize this, but Massachusetts is like the number two or number three state with cases, not per capita, but absolute. So like Mass is taking it really seriously. And frankly, I'm a little nervous about landing at Logan, you know, and yeah. switching planes and all that. Like that's not really necessarily something I want to be doing. Yeah. So we'll if you, you fly to like, land you can fly to like, uh, you can fly to Montpellier and, <laughs> and drive you know, south that, or something, right? That's actually not the stupidest thing. I I, I hadn't thought of that until yeah. this moment. That's not the stupidest thing I ever heard. The oh, dude, New is Hampshire's is real close, fly. dude. It's like an hour drive to New Hampshire. Yeah. Or fly to New Hampshire. Yeah, you're good. That's not the that's not the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Bro, you're three and a half million subscribers, bro. <laughs> Private jet, San Diego G five, bro. Can I tell you sweet, something right? like, before we get into the questions? I'm sorry, but I gotta tell you about this. So Private private planes, right? I, you know, I fly I fly out to Nantucket every every several times a year, and you know, a, a, a coach ticket is like five hundred bucks, and a first class ticket is like a thousand bucks. And so I was thinking, you know, a private plane would really be nice because you could go directly. And I was like, if a first class ticket is a thousand bucks, how expensive could a private plane really be? I was like, yeah, two grand, three grand. Oh, you couldn't be that naive. <laughs> Do you know, I, I don't know anything about airplanes. Come I don't know anything about airplanes. Do you know what it actually costs? I yes, looked it up. I do. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, my privilege is going to come right out here, but I do know what it costs. Privilege yeah. with the capital P. It's fucking, yeah. Oh, but go ahead. $50,000. 
uh, for one way. Yeah, I think one. I think that was a one way on a yeah. jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounds. I mean, that sounds right. A PJ <laughs> is about ten thousand an hour to fly. There you go. So, and yeah. so I'm sitting here like, oh shit, if I can do it for two grand, then yeah. maybe it makes sense. To- <laughs> I no, had I mean, no, truly no idea that it was that expensive. There's, I, it might not be running anymore. What's what was the thing that Nick used? Um, uh, Nick and Muscle app, used like Jet Suite or something. The Jet Suite was an app where you would get, you could, you was a subscription plan where you would get a, a seat on a jet. You know what I mean? It'd be a 16 person jet with 16 people on it. Right. And that right. would be that's more like if you used it every month, like a timeshare, it would yeah. be more in line, like 2500 3K, a ticket, that kind of thing. No, if you're booking the jet, <laughs> no. Well, I was just hoping that, listen, it seemed reasonable to me. So why isn't there, why isn't, no, why isn't no. there an interim between spending a thousand bucks on a first class seat and spending 50, I guess this. There is, the jet, suite, the jet suite yeah. thing is, is the interim. That's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, where you book seats on a private plane. And there's also, um, Jet Blue has some interim thing where they fly like Boeing business jets and stuff where every seat is first class and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, they they do. Private jet shit is real is real real next level and yeah, I've only, I didn't, I didn't I've really tasted realize that. I've tasted the littlest bit and it's once you get that once you oh you you got to you got to get away from there otherwise you're going to get addicted to that shit real quick it's I, be a real I didn't problem. realize how how next level it was I figured you know I ain't got a 4 GT I can fly private no, 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 no. You got to have, you got to like own the factory that made the <laughs> that's, that's where you need to be. You I own didn't the realize. factory that made all the rubber gaskets for that car. Right. And every other car. That's the whole thing. You know? Yeah. No, but, it's, so, yeah, it's a different world. It's another level. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and maybe, said, I sound, maybe it's ignorant that I'm like that I'm saying this, but I just don't know that much about airplanes. And so I didn't really realize how expensive wait, it does was. Does Zach have a fact check for Someone us? said Jet Suite just filed for bankruptcy due to COVID. Oh, oh no. <laughs> so you might be able to get an even cheaper get flights. in on the ground floor of the reorg <laughs> Je- you could you could just buy a plane for like 12 bucks because they, they went bankrupt you're like i have a plane i don't know what to do with it yeah, what do these man. planes cost these planes must be it's not the pl- it's not the plane it's the service it's the i mean oh, okay. even i mean yes the plane is crazy but it's this it's the service and it's and there's an hourly flight and, and then there's you got you know you got full time that's that's yeah. that's, that's three full-time employees if you buy a plane <laughs> Or, t- nah. or two or three if you have a if you have a flight attendant, but yeah no no planes are just are another yeah y- yeah I mean even you gotta be flight attendant people flight have flight attendant. attendants on private planes yeah they do they on do. their own private planes yes they do if it's <laughs> only on the really dope ones but they do yes it's I why mean, can't it's, they just we're talking about a small like they can't just get up and get their own. Stop. No, uh, look, I've been on. Uh, oh God, this sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Given what's going on right now, talking about private jets seems so horrible. But it's I didn't pay for it. It wasn't my plane. What do you want me to tell you? It was so amazing. It was. <laughs> well, I tell you, you. At the very least, I want to know. No, I know they, what she, you know like. what she she made she made she made cocktails and and they prepared like they fresh like tossed salad. Not. Oh, that's a wrong choice of words, but they uh, appetizers. They made the, they made food. They re, they made food, and you know they get you shit. I've heard wow. other things that How they many do. People as well. were on this plane. I don't know, five or six. Matt, they was, get you shit. You're with five other human beings. Well, bro, this but, is a fucking other level. What do you want from yeah. me? I don't know. What do you want from me? They prepare the food and they serve it. They do the place settings. They do the whole like what you'd get in a first class. Thing. I agree. And Doug, if you're if you're spending ten grand an hour, yeah, which yeah, is you're right. You gotta have a person. Five hundred yeah, dollars yeah, yeah. a minute, right? You, Even if she you know. gets two fifty an hour to do her job, who it's a fucking decimal point at that at that price. Yeah, I just mean if you're paying that much, you're like, I don't want to get up and make my own get yeah. my own diet coke. Yeah. yeah. So uh, yeah. I, look, I, oh, can you jump out of it if you've rented it? I don't think there's any jet you fast. can jump out of. Yeah, you're going too fast. I don't think there's any. <laughs> For 10 grand, I want to be able to jump out of the plane. That's what I want to be able to do. I mean, the real go, no go is at that 10K an hour, can I smoke weed? I mean, that's well, surely all I really What is the answer about. to that? Can you smoke on planes? Like if that? you own it, yes. If you're really? renting it, odds are no. Yeah, if you own it, absolutely. Yeah. That's not like an FAA thing. If you own the plane, there's no well, FAA, dude. There's well, no yeah, FAA. but the FAA's probably got some rules about what can happen, even if it's Bro, a real plane. The, the, the DMV has rules, the cops have rules about what I can do with my there car. There might be a law, but when you're at 42,000 feet, there's no fucking there's laws, dude. That, those, everyone on that plane is on your payroll. Everyone. 
Right. You make the rules, right. man. You'd think the pilot, though, would be like, hey, maybe not light a fire on this one. Maybe let's just. Oh, no, they've been smoking on private planes for a long time. It's not you're not going to you're not going to take the plane down by smoking. It's like, will the secondhand smoke cause this pilot to get very high and miss and his be a problem? <laughs> he's going to land somewhere else. He's like, oh, I forgot. Oh, we're in Europe now. We're going to New York. Oh, oh shit. no. If you if you own the plane, you're doing whatever you want on the plane. My parents told me that back in the day there was a smoking section and a non-smoking yes. section. Yes. Have you never on been on airplane. one of those flights? No, he's he's seven years younger than us. Oh, you've never been on a smoking flight. The mere flight. concept of it sounds insane to me. Yes. How could you want to know how it, it gets even crazier? Smoke would stay. Magic wall, dude. Do you want to know how it gets even crazier than that? I was in Italy in 1994 as a as I was like. 12 I think and I was on a family vacation to Europe we went to Italy and we flew internally in Italy I believe from Venice to Rome it was like a you know one of those 30 minute yeah, flights flight. yeah smoking and non-smoking how do they divide this plane uh, left uh, and right <laughs> <laughs> left side smoking right side non-smoking <laughs> oh my god that seems about right, That's Fredo. the most Italy fuck you ever. <laughs> right. That's part of the charm. Yeah, That's yeah. hilarious. Hey, That's go hilarious. fuck yourself. They're probably like, well, look, everyone's breathing forward. So everyone should be, it shouldn't be divided, you know, across or front and back. It should All be Italian, left side, bro. right side. <laughs> On, Unreal. Yeah. yeah, Doug, this was back, you know, they, they sent people to space in the 60s. So they had the tech for that, but they still were like smoking, yeah. non-smoking, three feet apart. Yeah, I mean, sense. honestly, the Mercury space program, you could smoke stoves in that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> on the left side the left side john glenn was like listen guys <laughs> i'm not gonna make it we're running out of oxygen doug john. you've seen the clip of uh dick trickle uh during a caution flag in nascar in the 80s right no but i can only imagine that one is of, unreal if that's true Smoking one of the in great the car. yeah oh yeah he had a pack of winston's and he had You're a fucking kidding. cigarette lighter in his nascar open face helmets this is the 80s yeah, yeah. and this motherfucker would have one you're <laughs> yeah, during it, there's there's in car video I can't show, but it's it's like over the shoulder camera and it's like oh caution on the thing and everyone slows down and he just reaches over and then you're, yeah even the commentators like there's Dick lighting up his Winston's <laughs> I mean, that is a, that is a sponsorship oh my god that was what amazing a that is yeah. a sponsorship time what do you mean nightmare that was an opportunity in '89 they were like get Winston on the phone wait wait, wait was it a was it a promotional thing. No, he just liked to smoke cigarettes, but I'm sure, I, I guarantee you Dick Trickle's car had at least one cigarette company on the outside, if not two. Well, yeah, of course, back then. God, that's unreal. All right, Zach, let's fucking trudge through the fucking quagmire oh, of questions now that we are there's finished like, with our Noah's Mill bourbon. There's like a hundred. Um, there's a hundred? Well, there's a lot. sort them by interesting. I, I'm just kind of going with, uh, yeah. No, it's um, okay. Uh, Jay Steinbrecher, because he was in first and he posted this question in like the morning morning. Um, he has 20 grand to restore a rusted 05 Jag XKR, or should he put it for something like a Shelby, an M3, or something else? Yeah, that Jag is not worth Correct. Restoring. There we go. Yeah, one they thing you should looking, always but... consider with a project car is, once this thing is finished, will it be remotely cool? If the answer is no, do not restore. <laughs> right. Yeah, and, and you'll never get even a You'll, you won't even get pennies on the dollar on that. Those, even play, a nice shape, an 05 XKR, non-rusted. I don't even want to know what rust repair is like, but that's worth, what, 8, 12, yeah. maybe? Yeah. yeah, it's super expensive. All right. Um, uh, I can't pronounce this name. Uh, Va Vanderberg uh, says, how does a Vanderhall Venice compare to the Morgan in terms of fun? Oh I don't have God. 80 Ugh. grand for a Morgan, but 20 grand for a Venice is possible. So I haven't driven either of these cars. Oh okay, boy. so there's a fundamental difference. <laughs> Morgan is a it's a Morgan, okay? This is this means so many things in terms of what it means to have a car. They're not the Vanderhall people are not gonna like this. A Vanderhall is like a Morgan, except instead of having a really cool motorcycle engine that sounds like a Spitfire World War II plane with a rear wheel drive so you could do donuts and burnouts and all kinds of silly hooligan stuff in a three wheeler and driving a complete piece of shit, which is what you do in a three wheeler because there's no laws if you have a three wheeler. A Vanderhall Venice has a Chevy Spark. Not Spark, uh, a VO, a Chevy, a VO front wheel drive powertrain. Now, 
if you bought anything up to and including a Chevy Aveo with an Aveo powertrain, wouldn't you be disappointed? Um, I I'd be disappointed my because when we were filming one for Proving Grounds, which is the, the show I produce on NBC Sports, uh, Lee Keen hit the brakes and the rear wheel lifted off the ground. And we have footage of that. The Vanderhall comes to a stop and lifts the rear wheel. They feel so sketchy. So sketchy. They look really cool. You get in, it's very steampunky, and it made me kind of feel like I had just fucked Gatsby's wife and I was trying uh-huh. to run away. Yeah, yeah. But they yeah. are dangerous. You still got Daisy's pussy juice all over your dick? Exactly. They're dangerous. <laughs> I also had a fake mustache on, so that kind of helped, but it, it, they feel very dangerous. I took my now wife, Hannah, when she was before my wife, I took her on a shoot one time, and it was the Vanderhall Laguna. Oh boy. And she got in the car, and after 30 seconds, she went, you must be joking. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? And if she doesn't get it, boy, is it gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Next. Doug, which is your favorite, quote, Doug is the type of guy, comment? <laughs> oh, you know, the pro- I-, I wish I had realized that was a trend earlier. Because I, it didn't, it didn't really register with me until a couple of months after it had started, and by then I had already lost so many good ones that now I feel like it'd be impossible to go back and really appreciate them all. I've wanted to do a video with my favorites, but I've certainly lost a lot of the good ones. I don't know exactly which one is my favorite, but some of them are absolutely hilarious. They really are, and people are always like, "Oh, does it annoy you?" And it's like, "No, this is <laughs> this is funny. I like it." Would you call it "This is the type of video"? That's a good. <laughs> I think I know that. All right. Uh, this is from yeah, Green, Green Mountain Car Guy. Um, Doug, since crossing off the Carrera GT F40 F1 Vector, what is the next uh, like Halo unico- unicorn car that you are excited for? Excited uh, about? Yeah, good question. To, truthfully, it's actually an interesting thing. When I first started this, all the older 80s and 90s exotics were the ones I really wanted to do. And then I did most of them. And the Vector was kind of like the, the pinnacle, right? Um, That's now, like one of the worst cars ever fucking made. It's but so terrible. Cool looking. It's a terrible so car. Cool looking. Um, and now it's more, I kind of am more focused on like the, the new cars, the hottest new cars are the ones that I'm most excited for. So like, I can't wait for Bronco. I just shot the Defender yesterday, the new Defender. I'm like getting more and more into like brand new models. That's like become my halo. But I will say the couple there are still a few out there that i want to do bugatti eb 110 still haven't done jaguar xjr 15 i've been offered but not locally and so i will figure that out at some point ferrari f50 i still haven't done vector m12 i still haven't done there's still actually a pretty good number almost as many 288 gto there's still as many basically as many as i have done that i haven't done but undoubtedly, that that list is kind of starting to dwindle look at that xjr xjr 15s are cool yeah i know someone who's got one of those yeah, yeah, I've gotten two people have actually reached out and offered them to me, but they're both on the East Coast. I'll get was to them one uh, Ivanhoe, cultivated collector. He's um, got one. Yeah, mate. one is in Connecticut, and one is in yeah. Nashville. Connecticut is I've, Matt Ivanhoe. Yeah. He's the homie. He's a good dude. I drove his. He's got a. Uh, he's got a really high mile DB5 GT with a DB6 Vantage engine in it. It's a stroker engine, and it wow, is geez. D wow. motherfucking lightful. And it's got a hundred- a hot rodding community of Aston Martins. Yeah, Vintage they put Aston. the DB6 motors in the DB5. It's really interesting. Huh. That seems like a good mix. It's like a yeah. thing that they do. And uh, <laughs> and he, this thing's got 100,000 plus miles on it. He drives it all over the place, and he let me hammer the snot out of it. It was great. Oh, the green one wow. in East Coast? In Connecticut. I yeah, remember yeah, that. Yeah. I, I did that yeah. video. Yeah. Ooh, that's rad. Yeah, he had that uh, that that uh, that Japan nine six two as well that he he media hoed around. It had it had one mile on it. Then he had a nine six two with one mile on it, and I go Ivanhoe. Let me put miles two through five on that thing. And he was like, "No, nah, I'll think about it." And then he let Leno do it. And then <laughs> and I was like, "Well, I can't really yeah, argue with can't that." Argue, yeah. Yeah, but then homie. Art uh, from Radwood gave me the red 962, and I put 200 miles on it. And wow. Yeah, it was terrifying. It was horrible. All the way. Doug, did, you should probably film that 962. It's terrible. Yeah, I should. That's all those kind of cars I can imagine are a complete disaster. It's a just death trap. It's not yeah. good. Yeah. It's yeah. not good. Um, all right. Uh, what car opinion do we three disagree with the most? Um, I mean, also he ran into Doug and he's very nice. This is Sean Finney. What car oh. opinion do we disagree with the most? Like, the we, Buick Riata is not cool. 
It's not cool. It's good looking, but it, it's front wheel drive. That is a pretty strongly held opinion. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think if there are any really unpopular. I hate black wheels. I really hate black wheels. And that's yeah, like the hottest no, thing. Totally now. agree with you. Interesting. Totally agree with you. Hate black wheels. Okay. Hate. I mean, I think there's Easy. a time and place, but I think they don't work with more colors than they do work with. I don't and, think they work unless and, the car is stationary, perfectly clean, and in a studio. After that, they look they just they look dirty, and then it looks like you have nothing but tire. Right, right, nothing but tire. That's my problem. And black wheels are now the Honda CRV offers a black wheel option. When you get, <laughs> when you get to that point, the trend is done. How far away do you think we are from from a an OEM offering the enthusiast edition? You know, it's like premium edition, track edition. Do you think they're going to ever just right. get, they're going to call it that well, and then we all have to just hang it up? Doesn't that kind of already like there's a Forester Sports edition with like red trim? Like that, that already <laughs> yes. exists to an extent. They just don't call it that. What's yet. uh what's Jeep had that? Was it latitude or altitude or fucking yeah. some something that had to do with being high? It just meant everything was black. <laughs> yes, they did. They did <laughs> right. That's style. like a thing. Like the, the Honda Ridge line has there's a there I was walking the other day and I came across a Nissan Frontier with black wheels and it's on the back it said midnight. That was the addition. <laughs> And they badged it like that. They didn't just call it midnight. They literally made midnight badges. So then it's like the trend is done. Black wheels yeah. is over. Got to stop. Yeah. Yep. All Fair. Right. <laughs> um, let's see. We got a construction worker who says he's looking at a 2020 Forerunner or 2020 Honda Passport. Uh, he goes fishing occasionally. Needs to tow a boat. It would be a daily. So between the uh, two of those, Forerunner. The for- Passport is a car is a, in my opinion a very cynical car. It, it, Honda realized that Toyota has cap and, and other brands have capitalized on four-wheel off-road capable vehicles and Honda looked at themselves and said how can we do this cheap? And so they shortened the pilot and they gave it the smallest little bit of off-road capability and then and now they their their primary off-road capability of that car is marketing. The the Forerunner is a very capable vehicle and if you want to use it as a capable vehicle then get that. Now, if you're if most of your, if 99% of your time is on the pavement, you want something a little more civilized, get the passport. But if you want something that is even slightly capable, I the, the passport is a depressing attempt at capitalizing on a trend that deserves more investment. All right, there you go. I have no rebuttal. That was perfect. Uh, I, have, I have no rebuttal. Uh, I have no rebuttal. That uh, response was perfect. Um, Thank you. That was a good James Carville. That, that, a, that was a good James Carville. <laughs> Whiskey Zach, engage. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Doug, this guy, he says his name is Ish. He's from New Jersey. He says, ask Matt about his vantage manual conversion like the one you drove. Vanquish. 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 Did you drive a Vanquish manual conversion? I drove a manual Vanquish a couple years ago, uh, and I loved it. it. That one is one of my least viewed videos. And that was one of the biggest deltas between views and enjoyment. Really? I didn't even care that it didn't get any views. I, it was so much fun. Why do you think it didn't do get any views? Uh, you know, Astons in general, I have trouble with. Truthfully. Me too. They don't, um, the uh, I, 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 the Astons uh, do not get good views from me either. But they're like I, universally thought of as like beautiful. Well, they were beautiful cars. I think they're too similar to each other. I don't think there's uh, anything drastically new to learn from like any new Aston video. Really? Right. Is there? I don't, I, I right. don't know. Maybe just. I don't, I don't know. I, I've never I like driving I've ne- them. I put up DBX like at the end of last year in like a prime spot in December, which is a big ad revenue month, and it just really underperformed. I, I just I don't know. Astons just don't they don't kill. In terms Maybe of that's for the best. I was supposed to go on a really long flight to Europe to drive DBX during and it got canceled for coronavirus. But if it's SEO poison, maybe it's for the best that <laughs> I don't have to it. fucking go. <laughs> it was worth it. You could have gotten COVID and had a car that didn't, didn't do well. Dude, we had I had I mean really I had like. I think because road and track had really been picking up speed. I, I really enjoy writing for road and track. Like, yeah, I, I find writing to be very more rewarding than making videos uh, mentally, the exercise of it. And I was really excited because I had six launches and six stories and all supercars, you know, for road yeah. and track. And and every single one of them was canceled. I mean, yeah, you know, it is what it is. But, uh, but yep. it sucks. Uh, I enjoyed it. They've been bringing the cars to my house. And I'm like, yeah, I, I hate I hate press trips more than anything that I can even begin to explain you're and actually so, right the pivot to manufacturers ramping up their home delivery is way better for folks like you and me where can I tell our, you where something, our time by the is way, so Matt, valuable on this, topic, this is something you'll love and i maybe i shouldn't talk about this because it's it will it will upset the, the pr people but yeah, last week i was invited to a ford mach e drive 
but it was virtual and it was in Charlotte. Now, <laughs> now I got to be honest with you, a virtual drive is already kind of a questionable thing. Like yeah. that's not really something. And it's certainly not something I can make a video on, but having a virtual drive somewhere that I got to fly to, <laughs> I was like, I can't think. Wait, of wait, 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 wait. Do you mean, wait, wait, hang on. You mean you fly there and then do something virtual when you're in Charlotte? You don't drive the car. You drive it in a sim. Get the fuck out of here. Are you kidding me? That I thought you they... meant they brought the sim to you. I thought you meant you virtually drove no, it in a sim. And... No. If what? they did that, I would have done it. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Are you kidding? <laughs> it's, a really you fly to... idea. it's a very bad idea. You fly to Charlotte and then you play, you essentially play a video game. Oh and like, my God, dude, I'm excited for the Mach E and I told them like, when the car's ready, I'm super pumped. But like, <laughs> I'm not, right. I'm not traveling right now. Like the, the risk to me, the risk of COVID is still really strong. I'm not traveling. And I've got canceled a lot of personal trips that I was really excited about. Yeah. I ain't flying to North Carolina to drive a sim. To drive a sim? <laughs> That's the craziest. Like, all right. I think if I had to pick, if I had to go longest flight, Ver what all right let's let me start with you longest flight you've actually taken or longest travel for least least reward no uh, judgment even if it's a cool car no judgment longest flight for least reward um i did i did travel to south africa to shoot a car to, to do a, a story on a car and not even and i didn't get a video out of it um that was not ideal. Was that a launch? Um, that was some someone's launch. It was the nine nine one point two launch. It oh. was in uh, South Africa. Do you know yeah. that? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Porsche really likes South Africa. Yep. They're they're fans of South Africa. It's it's on the same time zone as Stuttgart, but the weather doesn't suck. <laughs> I'm I'm not going there. It's I've never too, made too that far. connection. That's very funny. That's, that's why on, the Germans love the testing in Africa and doing zone. stuff in Africa because it's on their same time zone. They love it. They're that's obsessed with it. And it's like, no one wants to go here. It's too far. Oh, that's it's hilarious. I figured someone just had a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, knowing what I know from working at Porsche, that's probably true also. <laughs> I figured someone had a girlfriend. That was hilarious. Oh, man, that's so funny. Cape Town's lovely, but if you fly that far and you're on a launch, you're not really enjoying Cape Town. No. You what can, did you, you what was able. yours? The longest for least reward? Well, I mean, look, <laughs> there's a couple. Like, I, I once flew I don't know I have to, you have to do the math so it, this is going to be I'm not complaining about this but like I flew to Portugal from Los Angeles um which I believe was like 18 hours of travel each way to get seven laps around a racetrack in a Lamborghini Aventador SVJ now I'm not complaining about this. I enjoyed the experience. I had fun drinking gin at the hotel with my journalist friends. And overall, it was a good experience. And I got a great story out of it. That was my first ever story printed in Road and Track magazine. So it was right. ultimately worthwhile. But in terms of flight time versus seat time, right, seven, right, seven right. laps around a racetrack is pretty low. I yeah. once flew to New York and then drove to Lime Rock, which was another three hours from JFK to get two and a half laps around Lime Rock Park, which is a 58 second lap <laughs> in the wet in a Shelby GT350 with traction control on and an instructor in the right seat during my video. <laughs> wow. wow, that's uh, that's up there with driving a sim. It was so <laughs> bad, like, it was so bad that uh, the it was, it was so bad that Ford stopped letting people video the experience afterwards <laughs> <laughs> oh man i just hate those trips in general i also i i just i you know and now i i pay my own way to go on all these things so i turn down anything overseas it's not i mean happen. good for you good for you that you uh are yeah, able well, to i i would if i could honestly i would if yeah, i could ethically i can't for me that i do it there's an ethical benefit but also i'm in a privileged position here so but but regardless, what that means is I'm not doing overseas stuff anymore. Maybe I started right. doing it because it gives me a convenient excuse to turn down any offers in Europe. Totally, totally. I mean, yeah, totally. Um, I still I do launches because and I can't afford to turn down the flights, but because I like I like I really enjoy. I think my favorite. I don't like I don't like launches because it's like being on vacation with fifty people you don't want to be on vacation with. Right. Um, but I really like the fizz of getting access to the new sports car 
and sitting down at dinner with the engineers, having three glasses of wine and telling them what you really think about the car. <laughs> and then sometimes seeing those changes made in the car. And yeah. sometimes you sit down with those guys and you have really interesting chats or, and, and girls and, and you have really interesting chats. And then you see changes to the cars that people buy. And it's incredibly rewarding. Well, sometimes you yeah. learn why they are the way they are, which can also be that really interesting. Because we are oftentimes just like people, journalists, you know, fans of cars can complain about things and they can go, look, here's how this works. You go, oh, that's why. Yeah. You, right. Going on the launch, you get the why. Yep. Whereas you get, you get the what when the car comes to you. If you, yeah. especially if you don't necessarily think to proactively find the why, mm -hmm. yeah. you know what I mean. But if you're at the launch, you go blah, 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 and they go, "Well, this is a you know," and, then and you, you, have go, to, you have to be able to sniff out the bullshit why. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> and, exactly right. right. And a lot of a lot of people don't or don't care to. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, Zach? I we mean, keep, let's keep her going. So many. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next car: LS four hundred or W one forty coupe. Oh, one forty. Oh. <sighs> I got a video coming on a really nice one. It wasn't actually that nice, but everything was working. Nah. Oh, I love that car. Power, best, best power center made. mirror. The the power center mirror is the craziest. That's the that's the ultimate quirk, isn't it? It's the stupidest Absolutely. feature Ian, in any Matt, car. Do you know about the rear antenna things when you back up? Wait, what? That car was before parking sensors. They have a feature where you put it in reverse, and two little antennas pop up about a foot out of the trunk. To let you, so you can see in your mirrors how I've far back you are. I've never seen that before. They I... only did it for the first three <laughs> model years, maybe. Wow. And um, so I had to seek out an early car where all that stuff was working, the power center mirror. And the one I found was kind of rough, but everything worked. And I was like, I have to, this is the one. Yeah. They eventually got parking sensors. And so they got rid of that. But in the earliest models, they have these little That's antennas amazing. every time you shift into reverse. I had that 97 uh, S600 sedan and it was, uh, uh, the, the gearbox was slipping. And because of that, it was totaled. Yeah. <laughs> you could only yeah. use 25% throttle in first gear. That, that meant it was totaled. <laughs> Other than that, Everything, including the power mirror work, the power center mirror work, but I've never wow. seen those antennas before. That's amazing. Yeah. If you find an old one on the street, mostly they've broken. But if you ever run across one, because they start, you know, 92, 93, they, they made those with the letters were late, like it was 400 SE, 500 yeah, SE. The, yeah, yeah, numbers, then letters. Yeah. yeah, those all have it. And you will see, the next time you see one, look on the, at the tips of the trunk lid, they will have those things. And they won't work, but this one, they happen to be working. But, they, but that's what they're there for. They were a little flag that would That's basically hilarious. go up so you could tell where you were. You ever try to park a car with curb feelers on it? No, but I think that's a great feature. Why don't we have curb feelers? <laughs> the curb feelers were hilarious. You had to drive around the entire rest of the time with these fucking things sticking out of your car. <laughs> I didn't think about that. There should be some to be able to figure out. Don't you think? Like, yeah, where it's, it powers out, right? It flips out. Wheels are now like two grand a piece for a nice car. Like there should be some feature there that <laughs> do curb feelers. My grandfather had them in his Cadillac. When those touched the curb, it was loud. It was really? very loud. Wait, yeah. You know what, Doug? It's just occurred to me. Cars have fucking cameras all over them now, right? Every yeah. every new luxury car has the overhead, you know, bird's yeah, eye yeah. view cam, all this. Why the fuck is there not a tight shot on your right yeah. rear wheel? Why is that? Why has no one figured out put a camera right where I'm worried about smashing? I agree. Why is that? I, you know, I, it upsets me. I think it's a great idea. That's a real oversight. Someone well, needs that right rear wheel shot. Uh, well, the cars, I do. The cars I that have the cameras, <laughs> the cars that have the cameras under the side view mirrors, you can usually see how far you're, and that's that kind of covers it. Yeah. But it's usually more only you know expensive cars or option packages. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, now we're done. Okay. oh yeah, that was that. That, that, was, the that, was, the sorry, okay, that was the end of that thread. That was the awkwardness you needed to move on. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Evan Grove is uh, just getting started with film photography, and he wants to focus on shooting cars. Do we have advice for taking good artsy photos on a budget? Also, is a Subaru Baja the best camera car ever, or the yes. worst camera car ever? The best. No, the worst. No, somewhere in the middle. The best camera car ever. Is a is actually a Range Rover like Doug's and yeah. Top Gear guys know this. The one with the, with a half tailgate that Clam flips shell. up. Clam Four, shell. Forerunners have the roll down window also works. And earlier you know what, you know Tahoes what, though, and Suburban You, you know what would also be good as an Avalanche because they they not only they have a full open bed 
So you can move the camera around, but you can also get from the interior to the exterior and back because that stuff. Oh all yeah, full well, avalanche would be good. The one when I had the Raptor, it was great for actually shooting off of, but we learned very quickly that the problem was with road trips. You couldn't just leave the shit in the fucking yeah, bed. Yeah. So you have to load it in. I mean, yeah. if we're really honest, the best camera car is a minivan. I mean, there's a reason that minivans yeah. are the gold standard. And as we learned in the performance van of the year last year, short wheelbase Dodge Caravan Sport or is really where it's at. The fastest minivan uh, on the market. <laughs> as, as tested by Ross Bentley. <laughs> They mob, dude. Uh, as for f- photography tips, I have. I don't, Matt. You're you're more knowledgeable than I am. About this I moment. learn how to shoot into the sun properly. That's uh, most terrible photographers have listened to their mothers who were like, "Make sure the sun is behind you." It's when you learn how to shoot into the sun that that you make pictures actually look good. I think you know if this guy's trying to work on a budget, <laughs> it's all about placement and location. You know, yeah. I mean, there's some there's angles and things and settings, of course, but like you don't need really high tech gear. But if you can learn to shoot, because even if you have the high tech gear and you don't know how to place the car and use the light, you're going to take shitty photos. Yeah. So just look at what other people do, like Larry Chen and other people like that, and try to mimic it, basically. Larry's the best. Just whatever Larry's doing, just do that. <laughs> no, don't. You can develop your own style. But Larry's amazing. Um, and he actually he teaches classes sponsored. Oh by yeah, Can- he do teaches a class Canon class Canon with Larry. That like I mean they're in SoCal. That's kind of hard. I don't know where you live, but look for someone that that teaches classes, or just look for other people and and try to figure out how they got what they got. You know, you can look at people's shot composition and go, okay, everyone is placing a car kind of in the same way with the light in the same place. Have your own style, but like there are some things that you just you can't change. So pay attention. Did you um, uh, Doug, what can he? What are your thoughts on a first gen Mazda six? He just bought one with a stick and he loves it. Oh, uh, that was the best Mazda six. It was so beautiful. I remember when that car came out. It was 03, I think. Oh, it was so great. The um the the, the V sixes are the ones you want, but I, I V six manuals are really hard to find, but they exist. Those were all great. And they did a wagon and they did a five door hatch. The wagon was were, really it, good looking. I it, remember it, that. They were all beautiful. It was, a, it, especially in 03, so many cars looked like crap. And that was like, the 03 Camry was one of the ugliest cars. <laughs> and Toyota and Mazda. Oh, was that this, the Beluga like, Whale Camry? It was, it right? It had yeah. headlights that went like half the way up the grill or up the, up the <laughs> front fenders for yeah. some reason. I, it was a disaster. <laughs> Mazda Speed 3 is a super sleeper, too. It's it's yeah, kind of like if you're like oh maybe maybe an STI or an Evo but like I'm not really trying to like have the boy racer look a Mazda Speed Six is a good yeah did I say three you before said three, but you meant I six. said three I apologize it's the whiskey I meant six Mazda Speed because <laughs> the three is boy racer I drove one with full aero and 400 horsepower yeah like, no no oh. I meant six I'm sorry yeah. I buzzed I agree with that although I can't imagine it's too easy to find a Mazda Speed Six anymore no there's like four of them. Yeah, <laughs> like you found that fucking the last stock SRT four neon on Earth. Wasn't that insane? Yeah, <laughs> That's awesome. I couldn't That's believe awesome. that. I still can't. Yeah, oh, was it nice? Uh, no, but it was what I wanted it to be. It was cheap speed. It it was crap inside. It didn't drive all that well, but it was fast and it was cool. And I got in that car and I remembered when I was 16 and it came out how much I thought they were cool, you know? Yeah. I thought they were shit piles when they came out, but I drove one that was modified with like a 450 horsepower and a good diff. And I was like, this is a piece of shit, but this is a really, really fast piece of shit. Like it was, it was serious. Yeah. And that was the thing about them. They were crap, but it was just a lot of power put into this car. I was like, let's see what happens. You You haven't done a GLHS, have you? I would kill to do a GLHS. I've had one or two people reach out, no one local. And even then, I mean, finding a nice one of those is just a disastrously difficult task. In, in my neighborhood, there's a there's not a GLHS, but there's a GLH and there's multiple, and I mean literally three, Shelby Dakotas. <laughs> no way. <laughs> just, wow. Yeah, they're all trash. They're all, they're yeah, all, that's none the of problem. them they're all, They've all been trash. Yeah. The Shelby Dakota, and there's a guy who's got one of those Dakota pickups. Or, I'm sorry, Dakota Convertibles, which is hilarious. Shelby Dakota. Actually, if you look at that picture, if you chop the bed off that Dakota, you basically have Doug's G wagon. <laughs> wow, yeah, with the, it's got a really weird uh, roll bar. That is very strange. Yeah, they're weird. I like any convertible that shouldn't be a convertible. I think is a great automobile. The Murano convertible, the Dakota convertible. Bring S- them all. What on. about the SSR? SSR, fantastic vehicle. You respect the HHRSS, which is a really funny 
car. I knew this Goomba dude back in New York who bought one for his wife, and she didn't even really know what it was. And it was a piece of shit, but it was so fast. Yeah, it, it's quick. It had like 260 horsepower, yeah. or some insane thing, which was big at the time. Yeah, you know? most wasted powertrain placement of all time. <laughs> I the one I just reviewed an HHRSS panel, yeah. which existed. <laughs> And it has a little screen, you know how like Chrysler performance pages, it gives you like your current horsepower, your torque, whatever. Right. One of the things that it gave you was your cam phaser angle. Uh. I got to be honest with you. I don't know what that is. And I, suspect, I don't either. <laughs> I, I think it's made no up. One <laughs> driving that car has any clue either. There you go. I think somebody was fucking in the fucking late night software office going, <laughs> guys. I'm going to put phaser on this one. <laughs> Nobody's going to fucking know what this means, dude. But they're all going to be like, look at my fucking cam phaser, bro. <laughs> this is going to be fucking hilarious. <laughs> it's the thing on the front of the RA. Exactly what happened. How else do you explain that? <laughs> so fucking. What a stupid car. That's a dumb, dumb car. That was like peak n- just nostalgia was was worth money and they just started making stuff that looked like old stuff but they made it really weird it looked like a cartoon car and yeah. they just went for that it. That is going and, to prove in 20 years that rare doesn't mean valuable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you know that was the era where GM was just making crazy stuff pre-bankruptcy where it was like yeah. let's see if this works. Someone told me someone emailed me who was like an insider and he told me that um GM had an edict at the time that each brand had to come up with like one or two new segment vehicles, like how Chrysler had created the minivan and, you know, the SUV, they, they oh. wanted to be the next that. And so they, that's how you got stuff like that. You it was must like, create segments segment. where there yeah. are none. <laughs> and, and their theory was like, if we try to create eight segments, maybe one of them will be the next hot right. thing. And the Aztec, to their credit, was kind oh of that God. but in they were hindsight early. the yeah. aztec might have been the one that was successful wasn't yeah. it yeah i think the it's successful not for them. i think the person that had that edict it went to bmw and they were like yeah. and they were like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight series yeah you yeah. know the guy who designed the aztec also designed the c7 corvette is that right yeah same dude i never hated the aztec just fyi you didn't hate it what do you hate doug i don't think there's anything oh no no mercedes benz metris Oh, the van? You hate the van, but you like the HHR? Oh, I don't but, like the... I like the HHR SS panel. I like <laughs> anything that... I, here's the thing. Car enthusiasts, all car enthusiasts do is complain that cars today look the same. And then automakers come out with stuff that's mm. unusual, like the Toyota CHR. And then car enthusiasts complain, it's ugly, it's too weird, I don't like it. And it's like... But you asked for this. Like, fine, then no. they won't build that. They'll go back to building Corollas that look like everything else. I like cars that are weird. So the HHR SS panel is weird, and it deserves someone to like it. I, I agree that that there's credit to be given when something is unique, but not all unique thing unique things are great. So just be just because it's unique, it's not like this is amazing. Like, no, that that also looks like what, shit. Yeah. But I but I like where your head's at. Let's just keep going with this. And <laughs> to be clear, even though I like the Murano Cross Cabriolet. It was a disastrous automobile that never should have been manufactured in any capacity at any time by any rational corporation. But on a personal level, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> However, I am able to provide an objective review and say, <laughs> this is the worst waste of money that has existed in the last decade or so. Yeah. I, just th- I think it's I bet really you unattractive. Buying one used is a zero depreciation proposition. I You'd bet be that sure car has an absolute floor. Don't you think that that car should be three grand? No, I, I, dude, I know, I know better. That car has an absolute floor of twenty two thousand (laughs) dollars. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong, Doug. There's enough people in Arizona and Florida who are like, you know, that's pretty, that's kind of appealing. Yes, there are enough boomers to sustain this (laughs) virtually indefinitely. That's the problem with that car because it's a floor because if it ever got to eight. People will be like, oh my God, this is a deal. I got to right. go get one of these, you know? Right. So it doesn't ever get to eight. It's too desirable. Right. This is the Lotus Elise of Cross. This <laughs> 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 has an absolute floor. <laughs> this this is like an unofficial Titleist edition. I just, I look at this, I feel like I'm going to see it at every the golf Titleist course. Titleist edition. Totally. Yeah, it's it's totally. such a heinous nah. car. What a disaster car. Yeah. It's terrible. All right. Three more. And then Oof. we're going to call this show. Because because I'm tired of this studio. <laughs> um, Doug, what aspects of car enthusiasts or community um, 
Oh, sorry. Yeah, bothers you the most. Like, Doug, you hate Porsche stitching, apparently. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. I'll go for a little bit on that. Matt's going to argue with me. I think... I loved when Porsches were about driving. And the modern era of Porsche enthusiasts, all they want to do is talk about how my color was only offered for two model years in 1976 (laughs) and 77 and... I have a special stitching that they only did on four other cars and two of them are in Africa. And, and I just, half the new Porsche owners, GT3s, that kind of thing, they, they have more posts on Renless asking their fellow Porsche owners, should I get the leather covered air vent closer than actually driving their car? And it, it's just truthfully, in my opinion, it's become kind of pathetic what has happened to a lot of the former enthusiasts of the brand. And there aren't as many people, a lot of people buying GT3 RSs care more about the stitching on their seats than how it feels at 10 tenths on a racetrack. And that is probably the thing that has upset me the most. I don't entirely disagree with you. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not gonna argue with you. I I mean, I'm not gonna argue with you. I think I think I could probably explain it, which is that folks who are looking for something, so like, all right, here's the thing, a GT3, Spending a day in the canyons with a GT3 is special, right? Yeah. That's a special experience, right? right. Because because yeah, they've built that, that thing properly, right? But right. is a GT3 special? No. They build and sell as many as they possibly can. They're all over the place. And I think I read that 40% of the 911 sold now are GT cars. Okay. okay. So, so so they're special but not unique. So these mm. folks that get the special driving experience, right, they all share that. But they are looking for a way to make their not unique car unique. Hence the silly fucking options. I now, know, but- I can't defend it. I think it's dumb. But pick your color and then fine and go out and drive your car. But... It's not unique to Porsche. Ferrari people and muscle car people, you know, you just think of Steve Mignanti going, they made uh, 12 of these on a Tuesdays <laughs> in 1967. He's a W code, big block. And now I don't mean to shit on Steve Mignanti. I love him. But you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this is not unique to Porsche. You're right. You're right. However, in my opinion, it has always kind of happened with Ferrari. And also, we always knew that Ferrari owners didn't drive their cars and preferred to polish them than, than actually use them. I swear that back in the 90s and the early 2000s, you bought a 996 GT3. You know how many of those were turned into race cars? Like, that was what you did. You drove. The, in the 60s, when 911s, I mean, that, that was, you bought a Porsche to drive. All these other cars had more power, whatever, but Porsches were for people who didn't need to show off. They wanted a fun car to drive. And now they have three foot tall wings and vents on the front fender and they're all purple and brakes are larger than wheels on my car. And everything has just, it's just devolved to me into like a whose wing can be bigger, who can have the specialer version, not the GT3, but the GT2 RS. Oh, but my GT2 is better. My GT2 RS, my 911 Touring, the GT3 Touring Edition. Oh, but I have a paint to sample Touring Edition. And it's just unending. And I just want... Like, get a base 911 and drive it. That would make yeah. you unique. You want to be special in the Porsche world? Get a 911 with a stick shift and use the car. That is a, a thing that would make you special. I understand. No I totally that. understand. I think, you know what? I think I may, maybe I'm in a little bubble because I actually, there's a lot of these, there's a lot of 911s where I live, the, the, the Malibu crew that hangs out on Bill's porch and whatever. It's all 911s passing through. But like, these guys go out and they drive their cars. A lot of these guys go out of their cars. I'm not I, the people that I know. Yes, the things that you say are true. There's paint to sample and stitching and all this kind of stuff and ways that these guys can find ways to make their GT2 RS unique. When in truth, it's not that unique. They sold a lot right. of them. Um, but I don't. I I think I don't know. I think I think I think you need to come maybe spend a little time up here with us and come for drives with these things. Man, they drive them up here. They drive them up know, Let me tell you something. You know, you know how many options the Ford GT had? Four. 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 Yeah. Does yours have all four, Dak? <laughs> no. It doesn't? But the, the rest of it, no, you didn't want to get the, uh, I'm going to sound like a Porsche guy now. This is embarrassing. <laughs> you didn't want to get the stereo. Because if you got the stereo, it put a giant speaker between the seats and it blocked your view into the engine. When yeah, you the subwoofer. The yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, Macintosh makes a good stereo, though. It's an amazing stereo. Everybody says it's incredible, but... I Carl didn't get it, and if I were buying the car, I wouldn't have gotten it. Either. What? 
what stereo does yours have? Is a, is I a, just put in some bullshit head unit. What did it come know. with? Just some regular... Well, something that Carl had put in, which was hooked up to like an old school iPod. I mean, oh. it was a disaster. Oh, okay. So I, I was wondering if it was like an Explorer <laughs> radio or something. That's actually a good question. What was the stock radio if you didn't get the Macintosh? I've never know. seen one without a Macintosh. I don't know. I don't know because the people who got the Macintosh have obviously kept it. The people who haven't have upgraded to like Bluetooth audio and stuff yeah. right now. So I don't know. I've never seen one with a stock radio. Yeah. Um, my Lambo's got the stock Alpine. Oh yeah, CDs. <laughs> Is Five thousand? Huh? Is that true? It had it had CDs. My Lambo was the first car to ever come with a CD player. Nineteen. No way. Yeah, Alpine partnered with it, and it was a five thousand dollar option in nineteen eighty seven. No way. Two oh options. There's a, it's a two options on the Countach. Wing, stereo. Those are your own. Those are your only options. That seems about right for Lamborghini. And you yeah. know what? The original owner of all those cars in Florida, he got both of those options. <laughs> <laughs> well, the yeah. If you ever want to, if you ever want to fuck around with mine, you can. It's, you're you're one of the few people I would trust to to play around oh. with mine. Mine is really good. Mine fucking yeah. runs. Mine's a mine's a real runner. It's yeah. been it's been behaving very very well recently. It's a very happy yeah. car. Yeah. Uh, what else, Zach? Let's bang two more. All right. Um, ready to do. Is it worth it to buy a decent Z thirty two three hundred ZX Turbo for twenty five grand, or should I get a rough one and fix it? Wow, twenty five grand. grand. That's a lot of money. That's what those go for now? Mm, I would say no. For twenty five grand, you're you're really running up on Skyline money, and you'd rather have a Skyline every day. And and you could get half of a two thousand Civic Si. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> you could get halfway to a. Uh, what was that? A ninety nine, dude. Do you, what do you um, think? Do you think that was bought by one of those like conglomerates, <laughs> like a fund? You know, those oh, you like car like one of those like invest funds? in a yeah, the hedge funds for cars. Um, you make a great point, by the way. Skyline is what I would do for that money because I think I bought Damn. and sold an R thirty two for twenty three. Bought it for 23, sold it for 23. I imagine they're still about that money, and those drive better than a Z thirty two. Uh, the market is up from then. The, their, uh, the the equivalent car that you bought and sold for 23 would probably trade for like 32, 33 right now. Yeah. Still yeah, though, the market's up. But a still, car. it's a way more better car. Way more interesting. And the RB engine, and that, that those cars rule. I'd love, yeah. would you get another Skyline? I might get another Skyline one day. I Dad. just wish it was left-hand drive. I, I just don't like, I don't love driving right-hand drive cars frequently. Yeah, I think it's a fun, it's a fun distraction on your errands. My Delica is really fun. You're a fill yeah. Delica? No, because I can't find a stock one or even something close to stock. Oh, I would, drive mine. I would take close to stock. Do you want to drive mine? Mine just has yeah. wheels on it. Other than does wheels, have, mine does is stock. Does yours have an ice maker in it? <laughs> no. What? No, mine <laughs> is the Delica Exceed Star Wagon Turbo D. So mine's a low roof. It doesn't have the crystal light roof. It's got a steel yeah. roof. It does have, it has swivel captain's chairs, the dual zone air conditioning, um, and it's four by four low range turbo diesel, but it doesn't have the ice maker and it doesn't have the glass roof. But I otherwise, it's one, stock. I need to find a glass roof ice maker car, I think. Because those are, to me. Yeah. You don't have an ice maker. What are you doing? You're driving around in that Delica with no ice maker? What's Dude, wrong with you? I don't know. You're not getting ice made while you drive? I've never seen the ice maker. Sean's got one. Uh, Sean Morris at Top Rank has a has a, a glass roof. He's got a crystal yeah. light roof, but you I've know, never seen one. The ice maker may maker. have actually been a Toyota thing because they, they also did those vans, those Here. like you know glass roof lifted vans. Yeah, I don't that, know that. That's I can't mine. Remember who actually had the ice maker? Mine's fucking mint. Mine's got forty eight thousand kilometers on it. It's fresh. Wow. I just we just did the mate. I just did the major service on it. Dude. Who does it? Who serviced it? Um, not someone I'd go back to. <laughs> 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 Somebody that was recommended, and I and I wouldn't go back there. The service, the the, the vehicle's fine. The customer service was lacking. <laughs> hey, if you don't mind me asking, where do you have that vehicle uh, registered? South Carolina. Oh, okay. South Carolina. Yeah. I really want to get an RS2, and I got to have those conversations in the next couple of months as I pursue it. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can do the carb thing for 10K. Yeah, like they did on the G Wagon. But yeah, the problem is that, you know, that takes like six months. Yeah, I've heard it's not the money, it's the backup. It's, yeah. the, it's the backup. There's, yeah. there's literally one shop license to do it in the state, which is yeah. J, G and K or whatever they're called in, in Santa Ana. Um, so. And everybody wants to get their shit done. They got a long, they got a long line. California's and there's some people market. there with deep pockets. Like there were six by sixes where this, when this got done and that kind of thing. So, you know, me with my RS2. But the problem is also they'd have to put cats on it. I think it would mess with the, po with the power. 
So it's probably easier to do Montana or South Carolina. I'll call up your mom. You still got a number? You still got a number? Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, no. I mean, look for uh, it's for a six by six. I I get it, but for a uh, for a fifteen thousand dollar fucking Japan, you know what I mean? You're gonna double the price of the vehicle for a tiny little. The only little fucking- legitimate reason that I feel you have some one per- a person has to register outside of the state in which they live is if you're gonna do the smog. Th- like I think tax avoidance is just a bunch of BS, and that's all illegal anyway, in my opinion. But if you're gonna if you're gonna violate smog, I'm like kind of more on board with that. I'm like, yeah, that's like a car enthusiast thing to do. Not just a, <laughs> just a jerk. Your crime is totally okay. My right. crime is <laughs> your, your crime is bad. My crime is all right. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> all right. Who's the lucky recipient of the last question of our fucking old studio? Oh man, we have uh, medium spender MDK Kaiser. Uh, he says he's the kid that bought Matt Hardigree's. Merker XR4 Ti, I think it's bad, it's uh-huh. uh, a few years yeah. back. Is there a review where the drive of the car you were in changed your opinion of the car more than you had it itself, like when you went into it? What is like, do you oh, have a most yeah. enjoyable drive during a review? So can I tell you that I drove a Mercur XR4 Ti and it looks like it could be all right, and then you drive it, it's fucking horrid. It's really bad. Oh, it looks horrid. It's it's so much worse than a Fox Body Mustang. Wow. And it really? looks like it'll be so much better. Does it's it? It's so much worse. By the front end design, I never thought it would be better it than Fox like, Body. It looks like, hey, we're cool. European. It's good. Right. But Jeez. nope. It has that cool dual rear spoil, like, yeah. spoiler thing. Yeah. Um, a car that has changed my mind. Yes, it is unquestionably this happened. The... One that comes to mind the most when people ask me this is the Shelby GT350R, which I was expecting to be a trash, like Mustang straight line car. And actually, I loved it so much, I started seriously thinking about getting one. Me too. Um, but there's others. Integrale, I assume the Integrale would be a crappy 80s car. It actually drove so well that I'm also thinking about getting one of those. Um, that would be a fun, like, city car for you. That'd be a great San Diego car. Yeah, I just worry about, you know, who's going to work on it. But I would, yeah. I would. You don't I have a guy? Get one of those. You got a guy down there? Uh, I you know I would find one. Not for Integrales. We can find you a guy. Yeah, Integrales is a little bit of a challenge. That's the problem. I've but heard I'm those cars it. suck to work on. The engine bays are really tight. Ooh, they drive, so good, they okay. drive so good, and they look so good. So much fun. Dude, there's so got to be somebody down there, right? A couple cars have changed my mind negatively when I drove it. Um, I wasn't as big of a fan of the Mark IV Super Turbo as I expected to be, mm. um, considering how much I love the R34, which was the same time period. The yeah. Super just didn't drive quite as well as I was hoping. No, it's very. I drove one as well, and it was very much like... It's like, all right, it goes in a straight line well. It's a great GT car. Yeah. Like, it's very comfortable and soft, but when I went to turn or brake, I had stock brakes, too, I was kind of surprised. Like, it doesn't feel tight at all. It doesn't feel sporty. Right. It feels like you get on a highway and you just go, Whoa, Yeah, it's a cruiser. just do that. Yeah. yeah. It feels like, ultimately, it feels like the 90s car that it is. It's not that tight. It's not that precise. Um, but the funny thing is the R34 does feel tight and precise. And right. So it's kind of a it's kind of a disappointment. But that's why those won races like all over like that was developed almost as like a motorsports car, the 32, 33, 34, and it just yeah. destroyed everything, had all this crazy technology in it. And the Supra was like, here's a big motor, but it's kind of like a C four Corvette with an inline six. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And flame, that was the benchmark at the time when you think about it. Like it was cars like that and like the three thousand GT, which was huge and they didn't have like anybody to really chase them into making an amazing car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the, yeah, no, the R thirty four. When people ask me how that drives, I compare it to like an E ninety two BMW. Like I compare it to like a BMW three thirty five i from thirteen years later. Wow. Yeah. You know, when people yeah. ask me how it drives, because it's sharp. You know, yep. and it's that the engine is very yeah. modern and very slick. And everything yeah. is everything is as it is now in terms of sharpness. It's really, right. really something. Yeah. There's a reason those cars are so fucking expensive, man. Yeah, that's awesome. exactly right. It's actually funny because everybody's like, oh, the R34 was just a slightly evolved R32. I mean, it's the same powertrain and all that. But they, it's night and day. The way they feel, the way they drive, the interiors. A nicely kept R34 is such a nice car. I just yeah. wish it was left-hand drive. Yeah. They're worth the money if you're willing to put it up. If you're willing to yep. put up with the headache, though, they really are. Yeah. I went to look at a car uh, yesterday, and uh, it's a a, a a 328 Ferrari, and it was nice. For yourself? <laughs> Maybe. I wanted you to have got a, a go. Kuntash? You're going to get a Countach and a 328? I really wanted to uh, to make that uh, 
justification for higher <laughs> education poster. <laughs> you know, I was looking at that the other day and there's some crap in it. What was the, there's like a Jaguar. There or is something a, that some no one... stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah, there, I think it's like an XJS is in it or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which made sense at the time. But now, what is it that's in there? There's something that's like, yeah, oh, there's a 928. Yeah. Too, that's like, yeah. Eh. No, I, I drove two cars. I drove a 7,000 mile car and then I drove a 70,000 mile car. And the yeah. 70,000 mile car was way better. Wow. Uh, it was faster. It was healthy. What's the market on those 328s these days? I remember when they were like 50. Um, yeah, it's up a little from that, but not much. Not much. Yeah. It's not about it's not about investment. It's about something fun to play around with and put a few thousand miles a year on. And I'm I'm yeah. floating. I'm not confirmed on anything, but I'm just floating some ideas around. I I'm yeah. not like you said. Like I'm not interested in anything that's that fast. You yeah. know what I mean? Like there's no. Even I'm driving this new. Uh, there's the poster. <laughs> I'm driving this new 911 <laughs> right now. Um, 992 with a stick actually it's fantastic but I can't po ever see myself needing something that fast to own yeah, um, yeah. and so these three the 328s have enough torque where they don't feel slow yeah, and, yeah the uh, 308 feels slow the 328 felt like a good car yeah yeah it was way more reliable than the 348 and the 355. Yeah, no, um, the a well kept 328 is a, is a is a good car, and the folks I know who yeah. have a bunch of Ferraris and have owned a bunch of Ferraris, they all drive their 328s a lot. Yeah, um, it seems to be a favorite among the people who have owned many Ferraris. Yeah. and so it's drivable. Yeah, 308 is too slow. 348 is a disaster for reliability. Like yeah. 328 was that was absolutely the sweet spot. There's just old enough, just new enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah um man good show doug you're Thanks. always uh you're always a reliable fucking <laughs> rock star i love Thanks it for having me sorry we had to postpone what a experience i mean look dude it's it's wild this is a word yeah. where i shit i wish i wish if we were going to talk about politics i wish we started with it because now my head is too full of bourbon and i can't make a coherent because i because now i like want to say something about like the fact that the videos i've seen in the last couple days are horrifying of the excessive force of the police departments around our country yeah absolutely horrifying yeah protect and serve my ass that's an enforcement squad that squad's enforcing a system that was set up intentionally and in my opinion, is working as designed. It's fucked yeah, you up. You know, it's kind of sad. I, you think that, uh, you know, we live our lives. We don't think about that stuff all that much, you know? And there are people who are dealing with it frequently. Yeah, and, every day, uh, yeah. And it comes into, then it comes into the light, and it's like, oh, wow, this is actually happening. And we're just, you know, we're lucky and privileged enough not to have to really think about it. We Dude, are, we were on a level at one point where we were fucking with the cops. Like we we were going out and getting tickets intentionally and fucking with the cops like that, that. You know what I mean? Like I don't do that anymore. But like, but if I do get pulled over now, I completely take it for granted a lot of the time that like right. I that encounter is not threatening my life, mm -hmm. and like a lot of other people are not in that situation. Yeah, hurt right. from Hoonigan had a story of like when he got pulled over, he, he felt like a cop was trying to antagonize him to do something so the cop could justify some kind of force. And he was yeah. sitting on, he just like, but my parents taught me how to react to police. And I think the difference is that we never have to have those conversations with our, our parents. Yeah. And, uh, and I've heard from other people and, and my girlfriend's coworkers who are African American. They're like, we worry about our kids when they go out and they're in high school, like they might get killed. Like that's a very real concern for a lot of people. And we don't have to have that concern. And that's really scary. Yeah. I went to a car show in Orange County last year and there were some police officers there in uniform just walking around. They weren't there. I think they were just passing by and looking at cars, whatever. So mm -hmm. Orange County, I think it was Huntington or Newport or something. It was literally on the beach. And there's Senna's and fucking Koenigsegg's and like, you know, Wyra's and just all this shit. Montana tags everywhere, right. bro. Right, right. It says fucking sea of blue tags, bro. Yeah. And... <laughs> These cops, I swear, uh, whether accidentally or on purpose, I can't imagine it was accidental. There was a black kid, young, early 20s, with a modified E30, pandem body kit, slammed, probably a modified engine. And, and these cops went over to the kid, and I was there talking to the kid. And 
these cops that asked him to pop his hood, like all these cars, and they weren't, I don't, I don't even know if he was an enthusiast or trying something or whatever, and the kid like looked at me like, he was like, like what if, you know, what if I, there's something under the hood, and I'm in a car show, and these co- like what if they seized this car, it apparently was a shop car, that the seat kid worked for a shop, and he was driving a shop car, and like, he, I could just see the panic of this cop who seemed friendly, but if he popped his hood, that he could just flip a switch and go, oh, that's illegal. I'm going to take this. And I was just mm-hmm. like, I told the kid in front of the cop, don't pop your hood. And I went home and had a real long think about what happened at that car show and who that cop paid attention to and who that cop ignored. And you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It was fucked up. It, that's it. That shit stuck with me. Yeah. It's weird. Know. It's just, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know what to say. Man, I feel like, wow, for the last show in our old studio, I feel like we just ended on a four-minute a, a four downer, and I feel bad. I but feel, I don't think but that's okay, because that's what's going on. Like, I mean, it's been going on, and now it's just, it's at it should be top of mind for everybody. It should have been for a long time, and I don't think there's anything wrong with talking about that. Like, it's literally outside. You know, it's like yeah. happening around us. The protests are happening around us as we record this, and, and this show will go up. You know, two weeks from now. So yeah, today maybe, is June fifth. Right for, uh, for the know, record, so June fifth, twenty twenty. But I, but I'll bet you a thousand dollars that it won't be solved by the time this show goes up, <laughs> and that's unfortunate. Not. But hopefully, it's heading in the right direction. Probably not. It's wild, yeah. though. I mean, I, I'm, I'm well aware of my privilege at this time. I'm trying mm-hmm. not to say anything too stupid is really all I'm at right now. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Just trying to read a lot and trying not to say anything too stupid. Doug. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your time, my friend. It's always thank great you, talking Pat. to you. Thank you for having me. Nice to talk about cars for a little bit. I appreciate it. You're the man. You good are, luck in the new studio, dude. Come see us really soon. I know. I know traveling is weird right now, but you're not far away, and pretty soon driving distance things will be all right. I agree. I think in the, sometime later this year, let's do it. I can't believe it. I, we went all of 19 without doing one of these. Well, what I really would like you to do, if you would do me one solid as a penance for not telling me about knowing my strategy was shit two years ago, <laughs> <laughs> is you got you got to come up to Westside Collector Car Storage and do yeah. a, a quirks and features of yeah, the uniqueness of my building. I would love to do that. When, yeah. is, it, when is it done? You're close. Right? <laughs> you can't use the W word, bro. The right. W word is fucked up. We, or the D word done. I imagine yeah. that's a process too. Yeah. But how close are you? I mean, when I say days, I mean it. We're wow. days. And we're going to start. We're interior decorating and stuff. I just paved a street. Did you see on my Instagram? I paved a no, whole fucking no. street. I, it's, I don't own the street. But I paved it. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, kill me! No, it's amazing. I'm so happy for it, and it's like there are many quirks and features for you, my friend. There are many. There's the look. There's my. Oh, yeah, there's look, my there tarmac. Look at that. It's beautiful. Damn, that's looking good. If you were gonna come in in a, a nice proper collector vehicle, wouldn't you want to approach in a in a tarmac beautifully yes. smooth like that? Absolutely. Yeah. The angles, dude. It's all about the angles. We benchmark. Everything. We angles benchmark the lowest, shittiest cars, and we made it all work. And I had to make yeah. a fucking straight. Yeah, you got an F40 in there. You got a Courage GT. We, you know what? The so far the most, uh, the trickiest. We did a Ventador SVJ no nose lift. We yeah, made that work. And then I got the Porsche 962, uh, the Koenig 962 oh. down there. <laughs> yeah, well, if you can get if you can get essentially race cars in there, then yeah. you're probably okay. And then wait, Zach, go back. The front driveway, pull up the Vinny's Caddy picture. The front driveway is so good that I was able to drive the slammed 65 Caddy out the driveway at one above chassis on the ground. Wow! I couldn't even damn. turn the wheel. I had to go in a straight line, but it cleared the driveway. <laughs> that's when you posted this. I was like, "That's the best test I've ever seen." Yeah, no joke. Yeah, we should have one of those stance competitions where people just drive through the building and just on the way and out. Whoever can't get in, yeah, it's not what they do. It's yeah. like who, who can be super low but actually get in the driveway, yeah. or whatever they do, and then yeah. body parts fall off or body yeah. body work. It's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> motorsport. You've yeah, never seen same. this, oh, dog. God. No, that's hilarious. Oh yeah, the stance get into a driveway competition. That's a very <laughs> real thing. You should. <laughs> Man, what a culture! Dude, what let's a culture go we live one. in. What do they call? What do they call the competition, Zach? They Ooh. call it driveway drags. Uh, <laughs> God, I hope I hope that's true. I have no idea. That's yeah. insane. Yeah. And so, what? You win if you, you don't just, make it. 
No, no. If you get in, you just if you get in, you get a trophy. If you don't, <laughs> <laughs> so they just find some dude who has like a, a difficult driveway. <laughs> yep, pretty much. <laughs> oh, it's called "So You Think You Can Stance." I don't know. That's man, uh, hilarious. <laughs> oh. Oh my there god! Are, every week, I feel like I learn about new aspects of this car culture that I didn't realize before. It's never ending, man. Doug motherfucking Demuro. You know where to find him. He should be telling you where to find us. Thanks, man. <laughs> I will. Well, I will. At Westside Collector Car Store. I'll be up there. Thank you very much. Come see us soon, man. And regards to the family. I hope you stay safe and healthy. Yeah. And Thank you. um, man, goodbye to our old studio. Goodbye to the dentist. Goodbye to these microphones. Mm -hmm. We have a new <laughs> video camera system. We have new microphones. Why does Joe Rogan's podcast sound better than us? Because he's got the microphones that are sitting in boxes at my house right nice. now. Nice. Yeah. This is it. We're Our new studio has a, is a soundproof room with a four-inch thick table. We have new cameras, new arms, new microphones, a, 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 a system controlled entirely by iPad, acoustic tiles, studio lighting, an on-air light. And we overlook oh, an on-air light. That and we nice. yeah, we do have an on-air light. <laughs> and we overlook awesome. the cathedral room. It's pretty um, good. above West Side it's, Collector. Everything Carson. is a step up. It is a fucking upgrade. We've been in this <laughs> shitty room for six years. <laughs> the soundproof will be good. I'll feel a lot more comfortable having sex in that room. Yeah, you should. You should. Because yeah. this should. one, I can hear people. There's down no the hall. cameras yeah. in the studio room. It's very one of a very few places in West Side that's not covered by by security cameras. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's iPhones all over the place. Right, but, <laughs> but I know how to turn those off. <laughs> well, to everybody out there, stay safe. Fuck the police right now, seriously. And I appreciate all of you uh, supporting us throughout this time. And Doug, I am hating, jealous, and of course, very proud and in awe of, uh, of uh, your success, thank man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Come see us soon, dude. I will. All see right. you later. Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at ShoutEngine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet. We have a hundred megabits symmetrical. Yes. Full streaming at Westside Collector Car Storage. <laughs>